special? J- Jefferson, yet. Sanford and Son, I actually wanted, Golden Girls, no, all that stuff. You know what? <laughs> the, uh, go, Fish, Barney Miller. Oh, was you it remember Barney Miller? Miller? Yeah, yeah there was two Fish. shows. Fish, too. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. It's funny. Look, I, I was, want some hip-hop. Uh, okay. All right, so so it's a fight between. That's yeah. already odd Hip-hop couple. Hip hop or Barney Miller. You know, <laughs> all right. That's one or the other. That's the odd couple. That is. He likes sitcom themes. He likes like hip hop. I'm divorced. He's married. I don't have any crumb snatchers. He has two beautiful girl they're, they're, daughters. They're not crumb. They they're close to having crumb right? snatchers themselves. Probably five ten years they'll have their own crumb snatchers. Be a granddaddy then. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's unbelievable. Right. I remember that's your right. daughters when they were very young. You met them at Disney. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how yeah. old were they then? Eight or seven or something? No, or? younger than Even that. Younger. They were probably about four. Or and five. now they're in college. So yeah, I remember sophomores. that. It's amazing. It's like that, and a couple other friends I have when I see their kids who. A friend of ours, Cliff Brown, you know, who, yep, who wrote yep. for the New York Times yep. and is now in uh, Indianapolis covering the Pacers. Uh, I went to his daughter's wedding wow. this past summer. <laughs> that wow. just, that really blew wow. me away. Because, you know, I covered the Knicks. Yeah, with him yeah, and yeah, Bond. yeah. You guys so, had a, that was a legendary uh, uh, beat, beat, beat right? lineup. <laughs> you, Curtis Bunn. And Clifton uh, Brown. Cliff Brown. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Covering the Knicks. It was unbelievable. But, uh, yeah, let's start with the NFL. And, of course, the big story, Chris, is is what's going on with the Patriots and the turmoil, which I'm totally not surprised by at all from this standpoint. When your owner has to make a decision and make a pick, if I'm Bill Belichick and the owner picks – an aging quarterback, no matter if he's up for the MVP, no matter if he's well, going to be the MVP. Right? You know that. Well, Cubic Zirconia MVP is what <laughs> I'm calling him. Because, he, come on, he's not. If, Hold on. I, I will give you this. Look, if I had a vote, it would be Tom Brady. Now, what I will give you is this. I think it's a year with Carson Wentz going if down. If he doesn't go down, who's going to be no, the MVP? No, Wentz would have been MVP. That's why I say Wentz would have been right. MVP. This is the Shore Sports Network from sfmsports.net. Our broadcast begins in three minutes. the Shore Sports Network from sfmsports.net. Our broadcast begins in two minutes. the Shore Sports Network from sfmsports.net. Our broadcast begins in one minute. This is the Shore Sports Network from sfmsports.net. Our broadcast begins in 30 seconds. This is the 
Shore Sports Network from sfmsports.net. Our broadcast begins in 10 seconds. Eastern Shore and sfmsports.net welcomes you to this presentation of Hawks basketball. Now, Maryland Eastern Shore basketball from sfmsports.net. At the William P. Heitch Athletic Center in Princess Anne, Maryland, it's time for Maryland Eastern Shore men's basketball. This afternoon, the Hawks take on the Pirates of Hampton University. And we've got all the action for you on the Shore Sports Network and sfmsports.net. Hello, everybody. Will DeBoer with you courtside. Alongside me, Dave Bird. Game two of our Saturday afternoon basketball doubleheader on the Shore Sports Network. We just saw the Hawk women drop a tough 70 to 65 decision to the Hampton Lady Pirates preseason favorites and now the Hawks get their own turn at their rivals from the Tidewater region and Dave it's going to be a bit of a melancholy matchup the last one against these guys for some time. Yeah because one thing is we usually play really good games last year two games uh, down to the wire each time fun to call fun to watch uh, uh, we're going to Hopefully see the same thing here today with the Hawks coming out with the W. Indeed. This is Hampton's last year in the MEAC. Oh, in November it was announced that this summer they joined the Big South Conference. A lot more teams closer to them than in this conference, of course. They'll become just the second HBCU to play outside of the MEAC or the SWAC. The other one, Tennessee State, who plays in the Ohio Valley Conference. But the Hawks will get their one last guaranteed look at the Hampton Pirates this afternoon. And indeed, Dave mentioned it last year these teams splitting two hard-fought decisions Hampton winning 66 to 65 on their home floor on February 1st and the Hawks denying the Pirates the chance to three-peat in the MEAC tournament upsetting the fourth seeded Pirates 68 to 66 in the MEAC quarterfinals the Hawks first time winning multiple games in the conference tournament since 74 their first time in the semis since 94 one of the biggest wins in years for Maryland Eastern Shore and he came against the Hampton Pirates. Who else? <laughs> That's right. This year, Eastern Shore 4 and 12. They're 0 and 1 in league play so far. A heartbreaking loss to open conference action Wednesday night. They led by as many as 18 in the second half at Morgan State. The Bears able to claw their way back, take the lead in the final minute, and win 85 to 82. Hawks led for 35 minutes and 40 seconds of that game, but Morgan State, with their senior leadership, able to come in and get the job done late. Yeah, well, hopefully the Hawks have uh, learned a little bit from that game, and uh, their younger players uh, Indeed. realize what the MEAC uh, is all about, and uh, we're going to find out tonight. This should be a yeah, good basketball game. Bobby Collins mentions all the time you get a taste of what winning looks like, uh, tastes like, and uh, you want you some like more. It. The Hawks got a taste against Morgan State. They'll try and complete the meal against Hampton. This afternoon, Pirates are five and ten. They were idle on Wednesday. One of a handful of MEAC teams that did not play during the uh, opening session of conference action. They last played last year, calendar-wise, at least December 30th of 2017, losing 80 to 69 at Texas Rio Grande Valley. So this will be their first game of the 2018 calendar year. Hampton picked to finish fourth in the MEAC. They were tied for third last year fourth place team potentially this year if the polls prove to be right they never are but uh, I suppose <laughs> Hampton in their swan song their victory tour if you will through the MEAC a favorite once again to give Ed Joyner Jr. another conference championship and, and go out of this conference with a bang yeah you're right they're going to be in the hunt they've been in the hunt for the 22 years they've been in the conference and uh, especially over uh, the last 10 years uh, they've been one of the top teams in the league, You're either winning it or being right there, uh, have a chance to win it. And Bobby Collins knows all about that. He was Hampton's head coach and led them to one of those MEAC tournament championships in 06, assistant for several years under Steve Merfeld, uh, part of uh, what some have called the, the greatest two-year stretch in the history of the MEAC basketball team, 2001 to 2002, when they won back-to-back -back double championships and then pulled off the 15-over-2 episode over Iowa State in 2001. This is the 
this Hampton bunch. It's uh, 20 years down the line from that, but they're still just as good and still just as potentially powerful. And the Hawks will try and slay the Pirates, slay the, the Giant Pirates, if you will. Giant Pirates, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's good. Some teams are called the Giants, some teams are called the Pirates. <laughs> if you really want to make your name out there for yourselves, folks, become the Giant Pirates. Yeah, that's good. That means large pirates. How about that? Yes. Uh, let's throw it to a commercial before, before we uh, say other things. When we come back, uh, we'll have something for you. Maybe the starting lineups, but uh, tip time approximately 6, 8, 10 minutes. Don't touch that dial, folks. We got Maryland Eastern Shore men's basketball against Hampton coming up next on the Shore Sports Network and sfmsports.net. Do you need a break, a getaway? Plan a visit to Hyatt Place Dewey Beach in Delaware. Lay back, relax with your toes in the sand, and unwind to the sounds of the ocean. Please your palate with a delicious meal at Cape Hassa Restaurant on the Bay while taking in the sights of a beautiful sunset. It's time to get away and make that getaway to the Hyatt Place Dewey Beach. Call 302-864-9100 or visit HyattPlaceDeweyBeach.com. Make a lifetime of memories in your own backyard at Hyatt Place Dewey Beach. That's Hyatt Place Dewey Beach on Facebook and Instagram. Hello, I'm your waiter. Search. Would you like to hear the specials? Do they include any wings, hot and cold sandwiches, and Smith Island cake? No, you'll have to go to M Street Grill for that. <laughs> All right, see ya. Hawks fans, you want to sink your teeth into great food and watch the game, right? Make M Street Grill your new home. It's a sports bar and restaurant conceived by hospitality and tourism management program students and owned by a Hawk alumni. M Street Grill in the Princess Anne University Village, 410-621-5040. Training is about more than muscle. It's about inner strength. So I push myself. That's why I serve in the United States Coast Guard. I train with the best. A team that shares my drive and commitment. We collect intelligence, guard our shores against drug smugglers, and keep our waterways safe. Because our nation expects more. Discover a future that exceeds your expectations. Learn more at GoCoastGuard.com. In the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, success for our student-athletes isn't just measured by wins and losses, points on the scoreboard, or individual stats. It's also measured by their performance in the classroom, in the community, and ultimately graduation. Our student-athletes aren't just playing to win a single game. They're playing to win at life, because games end, but life keeps on going. The MIAC, educating student-athletes for the game of life. This is Maryland Eastern Shore Basketball from sfmsports.net. Back at the Heights Center, Maryland Eastern Shore set for their swan song against the Hampton Pirates. We'll bring you the starting lineups. When we have them, we don't have them yet. We will uh, oh, we'll milk some time for now, but uh, last year, of course, uh, we'll talk about Logan McIntosh against Hampton, shall we? Uh, McIntosh's running floater at the buzzer at Hampton on February fell, first fell short. That back and forth game at Eastern Shore lost to 66-65, but it was McIntosh who got his redemption in the quarterfinals. We're driving in, Lang went off the glass. Hampton called for the goal 10. That was with 12 seconds to play in that back and forth game in the NEAC quarters. Eastern Shore holding on defense at the other end, and the Hawks able to pull one out of the fire. Win 68-66, go to their first quarterfinals since 94. All right, we're going to take one more break, and when we come back, we hopefully will have the starting lineups and the opening tip-off. The Hawks and the Pirates coming up next on the Shore Sports Network and sfmsports.net. New year, new goals, new start. You've got a resolution, and GNC's got what you need. Right now, top quality vitamins and supplements are buy one, get one, 50% off. Start something backed by science to help manage your weight. Start something fierce that cranks up your training. Start something real that really works. Visit GNC or GNC.com to start something healthy today. And save even more with My GNC Rewards, a fast, free way to earn cash back rewards. GNC, change starts here. If you fall 
falling behind on your taxes, you know that the IRS is already coming for their money, and they'll get it too by garnishing your wages or maybe even taking your home or business. They call it enforced compliance, and you'd better watch out because the penalties and interest compound daily, making it seem impossible to ever get out of debt. You need to call the experts at Optima Tax Relief. Solving tax issues is all they do. One call to Optima starts the process to stop the demand letters and stop aggressive collection actions. They get to work immediately, fighting to protect your assets and helping you put your tax problems behind you. The IRS writes off millions every year, and Optima knows all the ins and outs of the IRS's tax assistance programs that could save you thousands. So what are you waiting for? Call Optima now for a free consultation. Call 800-343-6460. 800-343-6460. 800-343-6460. Optima Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. With Zillow, you're not just looking for a house. You're looking for the pool that will turn your kids' fingers into prunes. The living room where your dad will explain the nuances of football to you. Yet again. The kitchen where you'll alphabetize your spice collection and discover forgotten furry... What is that? In the back of the fridge. You're not just looking for a house. You're looking for a place for your life to happen. And whether buying or renting, Zillow makes it easy with smart search features, photos, and more. Zillow, find your way home. Take Hawks basketball with you anywhere. Get the SFM Go app in the Google Play or iTunes store and stream on SFM Sports Channel 2. Back at Princess Anne, Eastern Shore, getting ready for a matchup with Hampton. First Saturday home game of the year for Maryland Eastern Shore. And everybody's lined up as if it is going to be a national anthem. So uh, we I will guess we are. You. I think so, at least. Everybody just seems to be standing around. There's a... Everything's at a standstill right now. It's, it's, it's a 10th Avenue freeze out, if you will. All right, no anthem. So it's the starting lineups, which we don't have yet. So we're going to find out with y'all as to who the starting lineups are for this ball game between the Hawks and the Pirates. Maryland Eastern Shore, I, I can have a guess at least as to who's going to start for the Hawks. It's probably going to be Myron Thomas, Cam Baycoat, Logan yeah. McIntosh, Ahmad Frost, and Tyler Jones. Yeah, I bet on that. Carlisle for buck. Hampton. Okay, it is those starters for Maryland Eastern Shore. We got Carlisle, Marrow, Hextall for Hampton. Trayvon Barnes and then Charles Wilson Fisher. All right, we've got them for you. Live and uh, in time, in certain Before time at least. We'll go Hampton first for Ed Joyner Jr., the ninth year head coach for Hampton. Jaquan Carlisle, 5'10 sophomore guard from Philadelphia, three points, three rebounds a game. Jermaine Morrow, he's the one to watch. Six foot sophomore from Newport News, Virginia, reigning in all MEAC rookie selection and third team selection, preseason, second team this year. 19 points, four rebounds, six assists per game. He's second in the league in helpers, third in points. Greg Hextall, 6'6", sophomore guard from Norfolk, Virginia. Nine points, six and a half rebounds a game. He's top ten in the league in rebounding. And it's Trayvon Barnes, 6'9", junior forward from Lafayette, Alabama. Six and a half points, four rebounds, a block and a half per game. That's third in the league. Charles Wilson Fisher, the only senior on roster for Hampton. 6'9", forward from Los Angeles, California. Five and a half points, six rebounds a game, and a block per contest as well. For Maryland Eastern Shore, their same starting five as the last few games. Myron Thomas, Cam Baycoat, Logan McIntosh, Ahmad Frost, and Tyler Jones. Myron Thomas, the one to watch, I think, Dave. He came out and basically shocked Philip Carr, the MSU forward in the mouth in that game on Wednesday. He was playing much older than just a freshman in his first MEAC game. And if it's a different storyline, perhaps, if it's a different storyline, perhaps, we're talking about Myron Thompson, how he wore down the preseason league player of the year in Oregon State. But Myron Thompson. 18 and 9 on Wednesday night. Logan McIntosh, a career high 23 points as he put the team on his back. 
And for Eastern Shore, the big surge of three-point baskets, six in a row to end the first half. If they can connect like that today against Hampton, it could be a long afternoon for Joiners Pirates. Yeah, that's good. It, 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 whoever shoots the ball better, you, you, don't have to, you don't have to be a brain guy to figure that out. But if you shoot the ball well, you're going to be an Myron basket. Thomas controls the tip, and we're underway from the Heights Center. Hawks moving left to right as we begin the first half. McIntosh zooming around Jaquan Carlisle, and his pass deflected out of bounds. Hawks will inbound from the right corner. Eastern Shore in the white uniforms with the maroon trim. Hampton in the road grays, or silvers. Silverish gray. Smoky gray. One of those those yeah, colors. One of those colors <laughs> they make iPhones in. That yeah, that is the it. color for uh, Hamptons uniforms. Pirates in blue cursive across the front. Blue numbers. Fancy looking uh, numbers as well. And uh, we've got uh, some issue shot with uh, the shot, shot clock, which is one second lower than it should be. Well, no matter. Logan McIntosh the inbound with a smile. He zips it into Myron Thomas. Works it to Jones. Now Mott Frost left of center in the backcourt, guarded by Carlisle. Here's McIntosh, right of center. Jones sets a screen. Low takes it right baseline. Float shot, front rim, and the rebound corralled by Greg Hextall. Hextall, right to left, moves Hampton. Hextall drops it back for Carlisle. Jake Kwan dribbling towards the right sideline in front of Bobby Collins, the former Hampton head coach himself. Barnes, hands off backcourt for Jermaine Morrow. Step up three from the left wing. Miss strong. Rebound from Myron Thomas. Tips out. And Eastern Shore controls. And they pick up a foul on Hampton. Trayvon Barnes with the infraction. It was Barnes who hit the game winner in Hampton on February 1st of last year. McIntosh brings it up for Eastern Shore. Now he zips it to Frost. Into the front court for Myron Thomas. Myron taking it left baseline. Bumping bodies. Lays it up and in. Off the glass. Myron the freshman over Wilson. Fisher the senior, and it's 2-0 Hawks with the opening salvo in this first quarter. Uh, first half, start, rather. Myron first half. right off. Carlisle zooming in against McIntosh. He challenges Jones. His layup strong rebound, bouncing around, and it's ripped away by Barnes. Barnes turned around hook shot. Yes. <laughs> Trayvon Barnes from just outside the lane. 2-2 two, two, a minute in. Cam Baycoat, who was held scoreless in that game on Wednesday night. Now it's Myron Thomas and Frost in the backcourt, left sideline. Screen set by Jones. Frost, pull up jumper from three. Got it. Ahmad Frost from straight away. That was his sweet spot against Morgan State. He hit quite a few of those three pointers, four of them. And now a quick response by Hampton. Trayvon Barnes with the dunk. And Cam Baycoat's now into the front cut for Maryland Eastern Shore. Jones, 15 foot baseline left. Yes. Seven to four Hawks, a furious start to this ball game. Two minutes in, seven to four Eastern Shore. Hampton basketball as they will sit on it and give us a breather. <laughs> That's right. Charles Wilson Fisher. Now it's Morrow backcourt. Screen set for Morrow taking it right side of the lane. Scoops it up off the backboard. No good. And a second chance layup by Trayvon Barnes. The two-handed lay-in and the easy put back. And Hampton's back within one. It's seven to six. 17 to change and play the first half. McIntosh in the front court for the Hawks. Scoop pass for Baycoat, right corner, back out to low. McIntosh setting up the offense. Now it's Frost, Baycoat, and McIntosh, the wheels in motion. Quickly to Baycoat, dribbles to the center and puts up a three. Rattles halfway in and out. Rebound for Tyler Jones. Second chance points. Tyler Jones with four early points. And the Hawks lead 9-6. to 17-20 to play in half number one. Quick start for Maryland Eastern Shore again, Dave. Yes, both teams playing man-to-man -man defense. And now this is Carlisle. It gets open left wing for three. Shanks it off the front iron. The rebound tipped out of bounds. Last touch by Silver. So the Hawks take over. Byron Thomas to inbound. And this is Logan McIntosh who brings it up left to right for the Hawks. Over the timeline, guarded closely by Carlisle. Hand off to Jones, Baycoat, and McIntosh again. Zip to Jones in the right wing. They left him open, but Barnes closes fast on defense. McIntosh, left sideline, flings it into Jones, the baseline, posting up against Barnes. Hook shot, bang! Tyler Jones with six early points. And Tyler Jones working inside nicely with a right-handed hook. That's what he did against MSU. 11-6 Hawks, 16 and change to play in the first half. Now a falling away hook shot by Wilson Fisher. Missed his strong, but the rebound 
volleyed out of bounds by Myron Thomas off of Cam Baco and a break for Hampton as they'll keep possession and a full 30. Yeah, that's Trayvon Barnes way up by all 6-9 of him above the rim tapping that ball off of Baco. At 6-9, he is tallest player on the floor for Hampton and the tallest on the floor in general. Myron Thomas stands at six foot eight. And another stop to play is Myron Thomas. He had some uh, loose appendage of some kind of uniform accessory. I don't know what it was, but he had to fling it away. Hampton inbound, quickly into Wilson Fisher, and Frost nearly steals it away from him. Tips it out of bounds right into the Hawk bench. And so the Pirates have trouble getting it in play once again, and they'll have to inbound from right in front of the Hawk coaching staff. Ace Custis, Cliff Reed looking on. Inbounds into Hextall in the right corner, posting up deep against Baycoat. Now a turnaround fadeaway, 16-footer, rattles out, rebound, ripped down by Myron Thomas. Here comes McIntosh in transition, so dangerous. Right elbow stops, pops it back to Thomas. Myron steps in, and a whistle, an offensive foul. Myron threw the elbow, and somebody took a tumble. No basket is Myron Thomas, the offensive yeah, foul. Myron, Myron ran over two guys that time. Yes, he did. <laughs> he's, he's a big man. He can he can run over two of you for the price of one. The birds watch. I especially dangerous with stones. Higher to the front court. Wilson Fisher zips it into the right baseline for Barnes. Back to Carlisle. And now Carlisle controls. Cam Baycoat uh, marking Jermaine Morrow. We haven't said his name a lot in these first four minutes. Ten to shoot now for Hextall. Hextall flings it to Wilson Fisher. Back to Hextall in the backcourt with five to shoot. Setting a screen is Barnes. Hextall takes it. Left elbow. Kicks it out to Carlisle. Left corner three. Front iron. Rebound for Myron Thomas. Hawk defense holds again. Here comes Frost into the front court. Off the right channel for the Hawks. Now it's Myron Thomas and McIntosh on the left sideline. Screen set for him low. Stop and pop. Left wing three. Back iron. Rebound right to Frost. The free throw line. Scoop pass to Jones. Jones stripped by Jermaine Morrow who swooped in out of nowhere. Here comes Morrow. Right to left for Hampton. Jermaine Morrow working against Ahmad Frost. Cut off. He circles it up to Hextall. Left wing three. Karam. That's the word we're looking for. Whatever it is, it's out. J Jones had the rebound. Bangs off the iron. Jones tips it out of bounds. Hampton basketball when we come back from our first media timeout. 11 to 6 Hawks. 15 18 to play in the first half on the Shore Sports Network and SFMSports.net. Committed to serving you even better. McCready Health Immediate Care and Imaging Center in Princess Anne. Stop by when you need us and experience our expanded services, including 3D mammography for advanced early detection of breast cancer. Conveniently located next to Food Line in Princess Anne and open seven days a week from 10 to 8. Most insurance plans are accepted and no appointments are needed at McCready Health Immediate Care and Imaging Center. McCready Health, with you for life. The Eastern Shore is a perfect place to visit year-round. A gem hidden on the lower shore is the Henson. Located in the heart of Princess Anne on the picturesque campus of the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. The Henson is the perfect choice for campus visits, business trips, reunions, meetings, and relaxing getaways. Check into the Henson and we'll take care of the rest. Book online at umes.edu slash Henson. This is... Eastern Shore Basketball from SFMSports.net. Back at the Heights Center, 11-6, Eastern Shore leading Hampton, 15-18 to play in the first half. For the Tyler Jones show so far, Dave, six points, two rebounds, but also two turnovers down low as Maryland Eastern Shore has led throughout. Hampton to inbound for underneath their own basket. This is Malik Trent Street who flings it in. Fresh into the game for Hampton. Now no look pass inside for Hextall who is jostled in the air and a rebound harangued in by Ryron Thomas. Here comes McIntosh up for the shore. Low zips to Frost on the left wing. Driving in baseline. Cut off by Wilson Fisher. Scoop pass down low for Myron Thomas who steps back for 12 foot. Rattles out. Rebound. Controlled by Wilson Fisher. Here come the Pirates. Right to left moves Morrow. Morrow working left baseline. He's cut off. Zigzags in and out. Zips it out for Austin Colbert. And Colbert 
swirls home the three from the left wing. That is Austin Colbert, junior from Chesapeake, Virginia. Now a steal by Hampton going the other way. This is the other new face, Malik Trent Street. He maces the layup, but he gets his own rebound and lays it up from the left side. And quick like lightning, Hampton ties it, 11-11. Hawk basketball, Myron Thomas dancing around Colbert, flings it up with the left hand, and it's in. He pounds the floor in uh, jubilation. 13-11, Eastern Shore up 14 and change to play in the first half. A high-flying first half from the Heitch. Yeah, it's a fast-paced ball game, needless to say. Next, uh, now it's Morrow on the right wing, working against Frost. Triple team, somebody's open. And a scoop pass to Trent Smith off of a fingertip for Maryland Eastern Shores. They just, oh, is that a foul? Wow. Or was it just off of somebody? What? Oh, they're saying what the shot clock should be. Colin Gaynor into the game. Gaynor and Leandre Thomas, two fresh faces for the Hawks. Gaynor returned on Wednesday night after missing five games with back spasm. Inbound to Morrow. Morrow working left baseline so quickly off the glass. Missed the shot. Rebound tipped up and missed by Wilson Fisher. Gaynor had the rebound for the shore, but his foot was on the line. And another break for Hampton. So I'll have a chance to... A third or even a fourth chance. Now, Hampton's playing well up around the rim, if you notice it. Or not. Long, very long. Ahmad Frost takes a seat, and Sean Hoggs into the game for the Hawks. Inbound to Morrow came in from the middle of the lane, and he lays it up and in. Jermaine Morrow, first time we've said him on the scoreboard. We're all square 13 even. McIntosh quickly up for the shore. His pass swatted out of bounds by Hextall, and the shore to inbound from right in front of Ed Joyner, Jr. Hampton's ninth-year head coach. And the back-to-back MEAC tournament championships in 2015 and 16. Hawks denied them a third straight in the quarters last year. Baycote has it for the shore in the backcourt. Hand off to Gaynor, and now Baycote in top of the circle. Whistle away from the basketball, and everybody's walking the other way. An offensive foul. Against Maryland Eastern Shore. Yes. And that's Leandre Thomas, who is a magnet for foul trouble so far this year. He's fouled out five times this year, and he's had four fouls five times. Ahmad Frost in as Cam Baco takes a seat. Bobby Collins going to his bench frequently in these early minutes. Morrow dancing across the timeline for the Pirates into the front court. Wilson Fisher on the left wing, overhand pass to Colbert. Austin Colbert, chest pass Trent Street. Trent Street oh. stop and pop. A deep right wing three was halfway down and a rebound for Colin Gaynor. Here comes Logan McIntosh in transition. Jump pass back to Gaynor. He's left open on the wing, gives up the three-point shot. Instead drives left baseline off the glass and good. Alan Gaynor giving up the deep shot for the close range make. 15 to 13. Hawks up under 13 to play before halftime. Hampton kicks it out to Hextall on the left wing. Now they hand it off to Wilson Fisher, top of the circle, and Morrow in the backcourt. Morrow marked by Frost. Leandre comes over to help. Hand off to Colbert. Colbert with a little finger roll in the cylinder. Morrow very good at getting into the lane with the basketball. And he feeds the former fight in the line eye from Illinois as Eastern Shore tied again, 15 all. McIntosh with the basketball for the Shore. This is Gaynor now top of the circle, working around the horn to Hogs. Sean working against Morrow, driving right baseline, bumps him, stops his dribble. Rainbow cross court to Frost with seven to shoot. Ahmad's got to do something here. Steps up from a deep two, and he buries it. No, it's a three. Or is it? It is a three. In fact, it's a three-pointer for Ahmad Frost. The official closer gets the call. 18 to 15. Hawks, another tray for Frost, and he gets the rebound on the missed shot by Wilson Fisher. Frost pushing it up for the Hawks. This is Hogs in transition. Missed it. Leandre missed from behind as well. High off the backboard. Malik Trent Street brings it the other way. The former TCU Horn Frog. Now a rainbow into the right corner for Morrow. Catch and shoot three. Bang. That's Jermaine Morrow. 18 all. He 
these two teams going punch for punch over the first eight and a half minutes of this one. We're coming up on another media timeout at the whistle. Frost, screen set by Leandre. Hamad takes it to the left baseline, and he's hooked on his way. Jermaine Morrow called for the first foul, and that takes us into another timeout. Breathe, everybody. Breathe <laughs> at 11.27 to play in the first half. Fox 18, Hampton 18 on the Shore Sports Network and sfmsports.net. Chop Tank Electric Cooperative is sponsoring five high school juniors to attend the 2018 Electric Cooperative Youth Tour, an action-filled week providing you the opportunity to learn firsthand what it's like to be involved in politics, community service, and today's pressing energy issues. Learn about your electric co-op's business model, U.S. government, and experience history up close visiting national monuments, museums, and spending a day on Capitol Hill. Applicants must be members of Chop Tank Electric Co-op, and application deadline is January 31st. Visit our website at choptankelectric.coop. If you're looking for some good old-fashioned fun with a new twist, Southbound Alley in Salisbury is the place to be. With delicious food and drink specials, 20 lanes of bowling, and the best arcade and billiards room in town, Southbound Alley is a great place to bring the whole family. Southbound Alley has private rooms ready for your next event, holidays, birthdays, business outings, and more. Located in Salisbury on Southbound Route 13 across from Fruitland Walmart. Call for details or like us on Facebook. Southbound Alley in Salisbury is the place to be. Shots shot. Back at the Heights, 11.27 to play in the first half. Maryland Eastern Shore, all square with Hampton, 18 all. Well, Eastern Shore, despite the tough defeat at Morgan State on Wednesday night, their most complete game of basketball all season. They set season highs for Division I competition with 16 assists, 12 three-pointers, and they shot 49% from the floor, their best mark since their win against Jackson State in the Emerald Coast Classic on November 24th. Undone by free throws, though. They shot three of nine from the stripe in the second half, and that's why... Morgan State was able to pull it out. McIntosh flings it into the backcourt for Hogs as Eastern Shore controls the basketball here. Shaw the handoff to Ahmad Frost. He's got two early trays with six points. Frost zigzagging in the backcourt. He's right of center with 10 to shoot. Dumps it off for McIntosh. They work inside to a Myron Thomas, and Myron Thomas posting against two defenders. Lays it up and in. Yeah, Myron's just too tall for the two Hampton defenders. Banked it off the glass from the right side. Now, all of a sudden, when the calendar switched to 2018, he became a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. Myron with an early bucket, and he tips it out of bounds right into the Hawk bench. He's for short leading 20 to 18, 11 even to play in the first half. Pirate basketball inbound to Charles Wilson Fisher, top of the circle. Fakes a pass in, looks, looks, tries to hand it off to Lysander Bracey, and he finally gets it back to him. Bracey fresh into the game, the sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina. Morrow, lollygagging in the backcourt, steps up with a late footer, yes, from the left wing. Jermaine Morrow in heavy traffic, 20 all, 10 and a half to play in the first half. As he's going to be tough to contain, Dave. We saw it last year. We're seeing it again here. Jones has it in the left wing, handoff to Ahmad Frost. Now Jones left elbow, spin move against Wilson Fisher with the left hand, rattles around and in. Tyler Jones, he went for 23 against Hampton in the quarters last year, and he's got eight in the first 10 minutes. Hawks up 22 to 20, coming up halfway through the first half. Morrow dancing around in the backcourt, and then Ahmad Frost with a little shove on him. Officials saw it. Ahmad's first foul guarding Morrow. Officials today, Haywood Bostic, Lionel Butler, and Keith Fogelman. All classic sounding official names. And been here before. A veteran crew in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Malik Trent Street inbound. It's him, Bracey, Wilson Fisher, Morrow, and Trey Carver, a sophomore on the floor for the Silver. Morrow, crossover dribble. Hogs marking him. He's been a spark on defense. Flings it for Wilson Fisher off of a pick and roll. Wilson Fisher bumped in the lane, counted in the foul. That was a set play, really, pick and roll. Easy. 
Myron Thomas with his second foul. Not good. Two fouls already for Myron. Now Charles Wilson Fisher on a 22 all game has a chance to give Hampton its first lead. Well, Jermaine Morrow, so dangerous. Probably the highest volume uh, percentage of points he is involved with of anybody in the MEAC. Scores 18 points a game, close to 19, and distributes six assists per contest. Wilson Fisher's free throw, nothing but net. He shoots 83%. That's to be expected from him. And Hampton with its first lead, 23-22, 10-02 to play in the first half. Jones to inbound against the full court press. He flings it in to Hogs, who drops it back to Frost. And Frost kept that. Uh, kept honest by Trent Street, and Trent Street nearly picked his pocket in the backcourt. Now it's McIntosh in the left wing as the Hawks finally have it into their attacking end. Low, left sideline, centers up, scoops it back for Hogs, hands it off to Frost. Ten to shoot. Ahmad on the right wing. Jones sets a screen, centers up, stop and pop. Three. Got it. Ahmad Frost. Another three. He's got nine early on. 25 to 23. Hawks back up, and now they leave a wide open left corner pocket three for Malik Trent Spreed. Trent Street with the answer, and Hampton up 26 to 25. Nine and change to play before halftime. Frost running the offense. McIntosh with it now. It's been Frost from straight away. That's been his sweet spot. First two Miak games. He's got it right wing. Now he stops and shoots from three again. Yes, Surrey! Amon Frost back to back. <laughs> Trays. He's got 12. 28 to 26 Hawks. Under nine to play in the first half. Charles Wilson Fisher turnaround jumper from the free throw line. Shanked it short. And the carom falls to Leandre Thomas, who snares the board. McIntosh jogging up court. Frost again, left wing three. Bang! Ahmad Frost! Three in a row from deep. Untouchable. 31 to 26. It's in Frost's show with eight and a half to play in the first. And now Morrow tries to answer, skims it long, and Frost hauls it down. Into the front court, it's Hogs and a strip by Trent Street as it went off of the official. And it's going in Eastern Shore's direction. Oh. Near steel and put him out of bounds anyway. Yeah, he knocked off the official. He, did, he couldn't see who did it. So he was looking for some help. And Frost is hotter than oh, a firecracker. Oh, my God. Set him outside. He'll melt the entire region. <laughs> Frost. We need that out there. Five for five from deep. Picking off right where he left off in the game against Morgan State. Hawks need that three-point shooter. They've been missing one since Ryan Andino's injury. Well, they got one so far. Cam Bako dancing on the left perimeter for the Hawks. For Hogs, breaks off Trent Street. Sean Hogs steps back with seven to shoot now. This is Baycoat left channel. Close defense. Four, three. Cam has to drive in. Left baseline. One little floater. Yes! Cam Baycoat milks the whole clock and turns around and drinks it. 33 to 26. Baycoat with a floater. The Hawks are shooting the lights out of it. My goodness. This is just like the first half against Morgan State. Now a jump step inside. Trey Carver flings it right corner. Lysander Bracey's three is long and a rebound. No good by Trey Barnes, but a foul called Leandre Thomas Two as seconds. Trayvon got the advantage over him, and that takes us into another timeout. 7.31 to play in the first half. Eastern Shore 33. Hampton 26 on the Shore Sports Network and sfmsports.net. Hello, I'm your waiter, Serge. Would you like to hear the specials? Do they include any wings, hot and cold sandwiches, and Smith Island cake? No, you'll have to go to M Street Grill for that. All right, see ya. Hawks fans, you want to sink your teeth into great food and watch the game, right? Make M Street Grill your new home. It's a sports bar and restaurant conceived by hospitality and tourism management program students and owned by a Hawk alumni. M Street Grill in the Princess Anne University Village, 410-621-5040. Training is about more than muscle. It's about inner strength. So I push myself. That's why I serve in the United States Coast Guard. I train with the best, a team that shares my drive and commitment. We collect intelligence, guard our shores against drug smugglers, and keep our waterways safe, because our nation expects more. 
Discover a future that exceeds your expectations. Learn more at GoCoastGuard.com. This is Maryland Eastern Shore Basketball from SFMSports.net. Back at the Heights Center, Eastern Shore leading Hampton 33-26, 7.31 to play in the first half. Will DeBoer and Dave Bird with you on the Shore Sports Network. Wednesday night, Ahmad Frost had 15 points in the game. He's got that on his first five shots in this one. Five for five from deep. Ahmad Frost with 15 points. His career high is 19. He got that in the Iowa State game last month. The Hawks shooting 74%, my goodness, in the first half. 14 of 19. And that Hawks shooting as well a, as they have all year. How? That will get you a lead and a win every day. Trayvon Barnes the line for two for Hampton, the junior from Lafayette, Alabama. A double-double in his last game at Rio Grande Valley, and he hits his first free throw. 11 points, 10 rebounds, as well as three blocks. Even a block machine down low for the Pirates. Multiple blocks in six games, including four of his last six. Second free throw, up and good. Nothing but net for the 74% foul shooter. 33 to 28 Hawks, seven and a half to play before halftime. McIntosh flings it up for Frost in the front court for the Hawks. Now this is Baycoat in the left corner. Can cutting across the paint left to right. Zips for Gaynor, right corner three. Strong, skims the rim, and Jones holds it down from the left baseline, and he's clotheslined. Tyler Jones starting to establish himself inside, and that's Trayvon Barnes with the foul. He's got two. Austin Colbert back into the game for Hampton as the youngster, at least the newcomer, with some significant minutes. And now the inbound is to Frost, a catch, and the lay-in from the left side of the perimeter, the, the cylinder. <laughs> it's a perimeter of sorts. He's owning everything from behind arcs today. Yeah. 17 first half points for Frost. 35 to 28, shore up. And now Morrow, and there, that was a Trent Street, rather, and he hands off to Carver on the left side of the lane, who lays it in for the and one. Baycoat with the foul. That's number six for the Hawks. Three players the rest of the half for the Pirates. And it puts Trey Carver on the line. Elizabeth City, North Carolina native, averages 10 points a contest. This year, three and a half points, two rebounds again, and he hits his free throw for three the old-fashioned way. 35-31 Hawks, under seven to play before halftime. McIntosh zigzagging into the front court, a handoff to Frost, who's six for six from the floor. Scoop pass in the back court to McIntosh, changes direction, and a backdoor play to Frost, lays it up and in. Princeton offense, and Ahmad Frost has his career high in the first half, 19 points. Eastern Shore up 37 to 31, six and a half to play in the first. And they leave Trent Street wide open on the left wing for three. There was no one within a country mile of him, but he misses it. Rebound bounces once to Baycoat. Baycoat gliding into the front court. This is Gaynor, and now it's Baycoat, and Frost will set up the offense. He is 7 for 7 from the floor so far. Right wing, he's up to for Jones straight away for three. Back iron and the rebound. Reach four, Trent Street climbs the ladder. Trent Street brings it up himself. Malik Trent Street in the middle of the paint. No look pass, jump back for Colbert from the free throw line. Push it to the right, rebound for Carver and he hands it off to Morrow who's bumped on the way up. They'll get Colin Gaynor for the foul. Two foul shot against Gaynor, his first. And it puts Jermaine Morrow on the strike. Now Mano made his presence known last year. All MIAC rookie team, third team in the league. He was the only uh, first, second, or third team selection for Hampton. Rare to see and not multiple Pirates on those teams. He hits his first free throw. 82% shooter. Yeah, he's a do-everything player for Hampton, obviously. 20 points against the Hawks on February 1st last year, then 19 in the MEAC quarterfinals. I believe it was him who got, who tried to take that last shot with 
the clock expiring and didn't get it off. Second free throw rattles in. 37-33, Eastern Shore up under six to play before halftime. Morrow with nine first half points. McIntosh hands off to Jones. Cam Baycoat and now McIntosh. Frost oh. Andre Thomas also on the floor and McIntosh got his wires crossed with Tyler Jones as they fling it into the Hampton bench and the Pirates take over. It's turned the wrong way. The Hawks have taken care of the basketball for the most part. That's uh, one of the few turnovers in the last uh, 10 minutes. Yeah. Six first half turnovers. How about this? Hampton doesn't have any. Now in the inside of the free throw line, Greg Hextall stood up in the middle of the lane. A foul called against Tyler Jones. That's number one. Eighth team foul. Hampton's got just three. This is where it could come into play as well, Dave. Foul the trouble. The Hawks aren't very deep bench-wise when everybody doesn't have fouls against them. Yeah, we need to stay out of foul trouble, especially some key players. Uh, for the last half of the second half, like, yes. that's where the problem could the, be. Uh, de facto fourth quarter, if you will. First free throw rattles out for Greg Hextall, the Norfolk native, Norview High School, and then a post grad year at Bryant and Stratton, which could either be a school or a clothing brand, I'm mm. sure. And Hextel swirls home his second free throw. One of two from the line. It's a one-possession game again. And Logan McIntosh trapped in the backcourt, tried to bounce it off of a Hampton player out of bounds. Says tomorrow who drains the bucket. 37-36, short, up by one. Cross quickly into the front court for the Hawks. Yeah. And they'll get Leandre Thomas, Thomas for getting yeah. tangled up with Jake Juan Carlisle. Sloppy basketball for the Hawks after that free throw. And that's three first-half fouls against Leandre Thomas. More of the same for Leandre. He just can't stay out of trouble. He just draws fouls. I mean, <laughs> like a magnet. Like a moth to the flame. Hampton a chance to take the lead again. This is Hexto on the backcourt. Catch and shoot. Morrow, deep right wing three. Rebound, uh, no good. Rebound bounces out to Gaynor. And now here comes Baycoat, left to right, crossing the midway marker for the Hawks. Baycoat pumps the brakes, fakes a handoff to Frost. Now with five minutes to play in the first half. Sits in the backcourt, marked by Hextall. Now it's Gaynor, right of center, to Jones. Handoff to Baycoat on the left wing, 10 to shoot. Gaynor straight away, works it to McIntosh on the right wing, calling inside for Jones. TJ, spin move, inside, right post. Back iron, and the rebound hauled down by Hampton's Hextall. Hextall, the handoff to Carlisle, kicks it back for Hextall. Right wing three, strong back iron, rebound. McIntosh climbs ladder, now it's up to Frost. Give and go with McIntosh behind the back. Layup, he missed it, but he's fouled. Oh, that would have gotten the crowd to its feet. <laughs> Acrobatic shot. <laughs> uh, how about a Frost with 19 points in the first half, giving up the potential breakaway layup for McIntosh, and he nearly got an assist out of it. McIntosh at the free throw line, 71% foul shooter, and undisputed leader for this Hawk team. He had 23 points, a career high on Wednesday. Get this, 16 of them were in the final five minutes of the first and second halves. He was electric.
season. He rolls home his first free throw. His finest hour came against Hampton in the MEAC quarterfinals. 23 points for Jones in that game off the bench. 16 of them in the first half. Makari Copeland took over in the second. The Hawks able to pull one out over the Pirates in the quarters last year. Rattles home his second free throw, and the Hawk lead now five. We won 36, under four to play before halftime. Carlisle glides it up for the Pirates. Now it is Hextall dancing around the timeline, flings it into the front court for Carlisle. Take one, Carlisle, floor general in this setup. Chest pass to Trent Street. Now Carlisle, they work it quickly into the right corner for Wilson Fisher, who's back into the game. The Carlisle passing for Trent Street in the middle of the air, and it's to Colbert who slows down the one-handed jam. Austin Colbert from the middle of the paint. 41-38 Hawks quickly into the front court. It's Gaynor, now McIntosh on the left sideline. McIntosh slowing things down here. Crossover dribble left wing dribbling right side of the paint. Zips it for Gaynor. Now back to Baycoat straight away. If he catches it cleanly, it's an open look. Jones sets the screen. Baycoat left elbow dribbling towards the baseline. Scoop back for Jones. Catch and shoot free. Biked it in. And Jones shrugging to the bench that time. 13 first half points for TJ. 44 to 38. Hawks shooting. Six of ten from deep. Oof. That'll do. We'll take that. And now an alley oop inside as they fell asleep, and Charles Wilson Fisher with a big, big emphatic dunk. Now get Bobby Collins off the bench immediately for a timeout. Yeah, All five of the Hawks were on the right side of the court. <laughs> Charles Wilson Fisher on the left. Yes. Easy bucket for Fisher. Oh, heck, we could have made the bucket yeah, on that well, one. Maybe we couldn't have jumped quite as high as that. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, a few years ago, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but not now. Uh, Charles Wilson Fisher gliding up like an angel. He's from the city of angels in Los Angeles. The only uh, senior on roster. A.J. Astroff is a graduate student for the Pirates. But Hampton's got 16 men listed on their uh, roster. 13 of them are either sophomores or juniors. They are primed for the future, and they are primed for the big, big things in the big, big things, <laughs> the big south. If well, everyone sticks around and plays up to their potential, talk basketball. McIntosh floats into the front court for Frost. Frost stuttering around the left elbow. Now it's off to McIntosh. It's Ahmad patient with the basketball, not trying to force things with his seven for seven mark in the first half. Hand off to Frost. Now it's Hogs who's on the floor for the Hawks. This is McIntosh, left channel. Jones hits the screen. Low takes the free throw line. The Hogs, left wing three. Skims the rim. And it's corralled by Wilson Fisher. Intercepted by McIntosh. And McIntosh dribbles it out of bounds as Hexall knocks him down. He got knocked down, but he did, did touch him out of bounds. But he could have had a little help. It could have been, yes. <laughs> Jesse Williams not particularly happy. <laughs> Clapping and raising his hands to the officials as if to say, what? <laughs> Pirate basketball, 2-10 to play in the first half. Hawks up 44-40. They trap in the backcourt, steal by Baycoat. It's a two-on-two. -two. Baycoat takes it himself, and he's blocked by Hextall. Greg Hextall gets back and swats Cam Baycoat right in his face. Norfolk man beating Hampton man that time. McIntosh inbounds to Frost, the right corner, who chest pass deep backcourt for Hogs. Sean, errant handoff. Now he gets it off to Baycoat. Now Frost has it under two to play in the first half. Frost standing like a stone wall. A handoff to Hogs. Baycoat near the timeline. Now it's Frost with nine to shoot. Ahmad feeds left corner. Hogs for three. Short. Rebound snared by Trent Street. Trent Street floats into the right corner for Morrow. Turns on a dime. Dances around Frost. Works to the left baseline against Jones and drops it back out for Hextall. There's the fancy footwork of Jermaine Morrow right there. Screen set. Trent Smith on a give and go with Charles Wilson Fisher. Missed the layup and the rebound for Tyler Jones. Now McIntosh will saunter up court. In cruise control, he crosses into the attacking end. Guarded by Jaquan Carlisle. 
claps to meet him. 12 to shoot, one minute to play in the half. Screen set, McIntosh takes it at the free throw line. Stops a dribble, deep frost for three. And there's his first miss from about 30 feet straight away. And a rebound for Morrow into the front court for the Pirates. Zips it for Hextall, right wing, his three-pointer, front iron. Rebound corralled by McIntosh. And here comes Lowe the other way again for the Hawks. Still up 44-40, 35 seconds to play. There's about a 14-second difference between the shot and game clocks. And we're spreading the floor a little bit here. See if we can get this good shot out of the last 20 seconds. Bay coat to McIntosh on the right sideline with eight to shoot. Crosses up Morrow for Frost. Now Frost, left wing three. He's fouled, and he got it! <laughs> Come on, Frost! Ice water! And he's got a chance for his second four-point play in as many nights. He had one in the second half against Morgan State. He's getting ready to get it. He could go an entire season without seeing a four-point play. And for Ahmad Frost, that's two in a row. Frost with 23 first-half points, a career high, and his latest feat of strength, the most impressive. 48 to 40. The Hawks double their lead on one possession. Shot clock is off for the half. Carlisle sprints into the front court for Hampton and calls a timeout. If Frost, the only shot he's missed is one he had to force because the shot clock was going down. Unbelievable. Otherwise, he's... Wow. Eight of nine and six of seven from long range. The redshirt sophomore from Cincinnati, Ohio, missed all of last year with a lingering injury that he got in February of 2016. Yep. Now he's back, he's healthy, and oh boy, is he rocking. Yeah, and I think he even looks a little quicker than what he was. He certainly is in better shape and uh, he's done a yeoman's job of getting himself back ready to play and playing very well for uh, Coach Collins and the Hawks. He'll get a breather for defense in the final 15 and a half seconds. Michael Odiana comes in off the bench to walk on from Greater Boston. Hampton trying to get it back within two possessions. It's inbounded to Charles Wilson Fisher who flips it back to Carlisle, guarded by Odiana. Driving in is Carlisle. Carlisle and way too much traffic there. He played bumper cars on the left lane. And Sean Hollins called for the foul as he basically barreled Carlisle over. It's a tenth foul, too. Hawks foul, number 13, Sean Hose. Tenth foul for the Hawks, so Jake Juan Carlisle is shoot two. Carlisle, one of seven children, ages 23 to four. I mean, that's a... That's a whole generation spanning family right there as Carlisle shanks the first free throw short. Ahmad Frost coming back in. Uh, Coach Kyle is doing a little offense and defense right now. And and, uh, if it was me, I would think Frost might get the last shot. <laughs> Gee, you think? You think so? 9.6 seconds remaining in the half. Second free throw for Carlisle swirls in. 48-41, he makes one of two. Hawks up, Frost brings it up court. Seven seconds, Morrow guarding him like butter on toast. Frost zips it into Baycoat, left corner for three. Rims out, Gaynor with the tip and it's in. Colin Gaynor, the offensive putback. The Hawks break 50 in the first half. Maryland Eastern Shore, a 50 to 41 lead after 20 minutes of action. It was the Ahmad Frost show in the first half. He nearly got an assist on the final bucket. But the Hawks, stunning. Continuing their first half trends from Morgan State. We'll see if this one sticks. We'll take a break. When we come back to the halftime show, analysis. We'll uh, pick our jaws off the floor <laughs> after that first half from Ahmad Frost. And a uh, retrospective on Hampton basketball, shall we say. Okay. All that more at halftime. 50-41 to 41 Hawks up on the Shore Sports Network and sfmsports.net. <laughs> Do you need a break, a getaway? Plan a visit to Hyatt Place Dewey Beach in Delaware. Lay back, relax with your toes in the sand, and unwind to the sounds of the ocean. Please your palate with a delicious meal at Cape Hassa Restaurant on the Bay while taking in the sights of a beautiful sunset. It's time to get away and make that getaway to the Hyatt Place Dewey Beach. Call 302-864-9100 or visit HyattPlaceDeweyBeach.com. Make a lifetime of memories in your own backyard at Hyatt Place Dewey Beach. That's Hyatt Place Dewey Beach on Facebook and Instagram. Hello. I'm your
your way to the surge. Would you like to hear the specials? Do they include any wings, hot and cold sandwiches, and Smith Island cake? No, you'll have to go to M Street Grill for that. <laughs> All right, see ya. Hawks fans, you want to sink your teeth into great food and watch the game, right? Make M Street Grill your new home. It's a sports bar and restaurant conceived by hospitality and tourism management program students and owned by a Hawk alumni. M Street Grill in the Princess Anne University Village, 410-621-5040. This is Hawks Basketball from SFMSports.net. Turning sunshine into energy, Chop Tank Electric at Touchstone Energy Cooperative has some things for you to consider when you're considering solar. Be sure to enlist a reputable licensed solar contractor or installer. Start with a list of possibilities from reliable websites, state energy offices, or the Better Business Bureau. Ask questions, check out other installations the contractor has completed, compare bids, check references, and thoroughly examine the contract. More information is available at ShopTankElectric.coop, your source for power and information. Shop Tank Electric Cooperative, members first every day. Lower Shore Media Care, quality care close to you. Open seven days a week, just a short drive to Princess Anne, located next to Caesar's Pizza. No appointment necessary. Be seen promptly. Quality care by caring professionals. Jack Bird, Kevin Mull, and Megan East. Locally owned by your neighbors. Visit LowerShoreImmediateCare.com and remember to like them on Facebook. Providing top-notch care for the Lower Shore and beyond. Lower Shore Immediate Care. This is Maryland Eastern Shore Basketball from SFMSports.net. Inside the Hawk Halftime Show, courtside from the Hike Athletic Center in Princess Anne, where the Maryland Eastern Shore Hawks lead the Hampton Pirates 50 to 41 at the break. Will DeBoer and Dave Bird with you on the Shore Sports Network. And uh, Dave, we are witness to yes. the greatest half of basketball I'm sure Ahmad Frost has played in his life. 23 first half points, 8 of 9 shooting, 6 of 7 from long range. This is already his career high. He's having the game of his life against the Hampton Pirates. Yeah, I'm trying to think back now over the years. It's probably one of the best best halves that's ever been played here. And it's and just the, the first half. Overall, because of his, uh, number one, because of the shooting. And their three-point shots with people in his face. It's incredible. And they had that four-point play straight away. And this, this kid is doing it all. He is absolutely on fire. He had 15 points, and it really started in the second half against Morgan State. He had a four-point play against the Bears, and, and he's carrying that over. Frost, a lightning energy for the Hawks in the first half. And again, if you stick him outside, there would be no more snow and on the entire <laughs> Eastern Shore. He would have melted it all. Uh, we hope he can continue that in the yes, second half. Yes. Uh, breaking down the full stats here, the Hawks shooting 59% in the first half, 19 of 32. They were 7 of 15 from deep, and Frost has 6 of those 3-pointers, 5 for 5 from the free throw line as well. Hampton, meanwhile, shooting 15, uh, 15 of 37 from the floor, that's 41%, 3 of 16 from long range, 8 of 10 from the line. Leading scorer, as mentioned, Ahmad Frost, 23 first half points, 8 of 9 shooting, 6 of 7 from 3, and he hit his only free throw, 3 rebounds as well for him, and he almost picked up an assist on the final bucket of the half. Meanwhile, Tyler Jones, a quiet 13 first half points for him, 5 of 7 shooting, also 4 rebounds in 17 minutes of action. That's the two-man wrecking crew for the Hawks. Other scorers, 6 for Myron Thomas in 7 minutes. He's been in a touch of foul trouble. 4 points off the bench for Colin Gaynor, including the tip back to end the first half. 2 each for Cam Baycoat and Logan McIntosh, and then Leandre Thomas, Sean Hoggs, Michael Odiana scoreless. As for Hampton, 11 for Jermaine Morrow. That will be expected from him in the first half. Four of nine shooting, three assists as well, and two steals for the preseason second team all MEAC selection, Jermaine Morrow. Other scores, eight for Trayvon Barnes, seven for Austin Colbert off the bench, five for Malik Trent Street, five for Charles Wilson Fisher, three for Trey Carver, appropriate Trey for Trey, one each for Jaquan Carlisle and Greg Hextall, and then Lysander Bracey with scoreless.
Six. Rebounding wise, Eastern Shore owning the glass 20 to 15. Hampton holding a 7 to 5 advantage on the offensive end. Hampton with 16 fouls, two for Trayvon Barnes, 10 for the Hawks in the first half. Leandre Thomas has three, and Myron Thomas has two. Assists 9 to 8 for Hampton, 6 for Malik Trent Street, who's really distributed, and 6 for Logan McIntosh. That's been his primary role today. Turnovers just two for the Pirates, eight for the Hawks in the first half. Blocks one nothing. Pirates steals three to one. Pirates points in the paint twenty to sixteen for Hampton. Points off turnovers five to two for the Pirates. Second chance points ten six Hampton. Fast break points uh, goose eggs for both dueling goose eggs if you will. And bench points Hampton owns it fifteen to four. We've had seven ties and four lead changes. The back and forth first half. The Hawks opening up a fifty to forty. One nine-point lead at the end of the first half. That is their largest of the contest. They've been in front for most of this game so far. And really now, Dave, the question becomes, yes, what does Bobby Collins <laughs> say to his team to keep them with their foot on the gas? This is the same situation they were facing against Morgan State. The Bears came back and beat them. Now we'll see what happens if they have learned to finish. Yes, well, it's going to be a matter of attrition, really. Hampton is deeper. They're, they've been playing a lot of players. If our guys can keep up the shooting, then that may balance off the number of, of minutes played by each team. Now, Hampton is deeper roster-wise. On the other hand, they only played... They didn't play too many. No, they only played nine in the first half. And they've got... Uh, we'll see if the guys they do have on the bench can uh, finish up the snuff with the guys that have been on the floor for them. Well, we're shooting 60% from the floor. So if, if we do that for the basketball game, we're going to be a tough team to beat. Oh. And obviously, a couple guys are having uh, career days, especially Frost. But everybody else is, uh, is within the role. If we do not get in foul trouble uh, throughout the second half, then uh, we've got a great chance of coming away with a W. That we do. That's the game plan. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we will have, well, we'll talk about Hampton a little bit more. It's their final regular season game in this building as a member of the MEAC. We'll talk about that when we come back. Hawks up nine on the Shore Sports Network and SFMSports.net. The Eastern Shore is a perfect place to visit year-round. A gem hidden on the lower shore is the Henson. Located in the heart of Princess Anne on the picturesque campus of the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. The Henson is the perfect choice for campus visits, business trips, reunions, meetings, and relaxing getaways. Check into the Henson and we'll take care of the rest. Book online at umes.edu slash Henson. Committed to serving you even better. McCready Health Immediate Care and Imaging Center in Princess Anne. Stop by when you need us and experience our expanded services, including 3D mammography for advanced early detection of breast cancer. Conveniently located next to Food Lion in Princess Anne and open seven days a week from 10 to 8. Most insurance plans are accepted and no appointments are needed at McCready Health Immediate Care and Imaging Center. McCready Health, with you for life. Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, success for our student-athletes isn't just measured by wins and losses, points on the scoreboard, or individual stats. It's also measured by their performance in the classroom, in the community, and ultimately graduation. Our student-athletes aren't just playing to win a single game. They're playing to win at life, because games end, but life keeps on going. The MIAC, educating student-athletes for the game of life. Hear the latest in high school sports news with High School Sports Line, powered by County Sports Zone. Each week, Glenn Clark and Wick Eisenberg will bring you the scores from around Maryland, games to watch, and discuss the latest high school sports news on High School Sports Line. What an amazing season for Coach Tim Palmer, who joins us now here on High School Sports Line. My motivation is to build character and build quality young men who want to play this game properly. Listen anytime at mdnewsnetwork.net. Take Hawks basketball with you anywhere. Get the SFM Go app in the Google Play or iTunes store and stream on SFM Sports Channel 2. Back on the Hawk halftime show, Maryland Eastern Shore with a 50-41 lead 
over the Hampton Pirates. A stunning first half. It was the Ahmad Frost show with 23 points. He was Batman, and Tyler Jones was Robin <laughs> with 13 of his own points. Well, this is the final regular season game the Hawks will play against the Hampton Pirates when the Pirates are MEAC members. They move on to the Big South in the offseason, and we said it with the women's basketball team, Dave, and it's just as true with the men's team, the flagship program in this league. It'd be tough to lose them. Uh, they, they certainly won't miss the, the competition and uh, uh, losing to them. This is one fewer contender, year-round contender, <laughs> that uh, Eastern Shore will have to deal with. Well, I'm not sure there's too many other too many other basketball teams in the uh, MEAC that are shedding any tears that uh, uh, you know, Hampton is, uh, is moving on. Uh, Certainly. But they've always represented the conference well uh, in NCAA play, et cetera. So that's where we're going to miss them. Somebody needs to jump up and uh, – and take this their spot. It'll be interesting to see uh, who's that going to be. This is true. Hampton joined in 1995. They've won six MEAC tournament championships. 2001, 2002, 2006 with Bobby Collins at the helm, and then under Ed Joyner Jr., 2011, and the back-to-back -back crowns in 2015 and 16. And uh, once this game is over, of course, assuming we don't meet them in the tournament, that'll be it for the Hawks' guaranteed rivalry against the Hampton Pirates, but we certainly wish them luck. We hope they represent the MEAC well when they move on to the Big South. Well, this will be a rare opportunity to see, Dave. What yeah, does uh, what, How does the MEAC stack up against other conferences? Uh, what happens when you take one of the premier programs in this league and stick it in another one? And, of course, the Big South, the lower of the mid-majors, like the MEAC, but uh, perhaps a half step up? We'll find out. Okay. If Hampton comes in and completely blows them out of the water, then we'll know, okay, Hey, we're doing pretty well. We're going to be watching, too. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. When we come back, second half action. Hawks trying to bring it home against Hampton. 50-41 to 41 on the Shore Sports Network and SFMSports.net. If you've fallen behind on your taxes, you know that the IRS is already coming for their money. And they'll get it, too, by garnishing your wages or maybe even taking your home or business. They call it enforced compliance. And you'd better watch out because the penalties and interest compound daily, making it seem impossible to ever get out of debt. You need to call the experts at Optima Tax Relief. Solving tax issues is all they do. One call to Optima starts the process to stop the demand letters and stop aggressive collection actions. They get to work immediately. Fighting to protect your assets and helping you put your tax problems behind you. The IRS writes off millions every year, and Optima knows all the ins and outs of the IRS's tax assistance programs that could save you thousands. So what are you waiting for? Call Optima now for a free consultation. Call 800-343-6460. 800-343-6460. 800-343-6460. Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. The 4 for 4 from Wendy's has a lot of fans because it's a deal that gives you a sandwich plus four nuggets, a small fry, and drink, all for just $4. But now the 4 for 4 has more variety than ever with eight sandwich choices. I'm loyal to the double stack. I'm Junior Baking Cheeseburger through and through. I pledge myself to the crispy chicken sandwich. I'm loyal to my hunger. Whether you're loyal to one sandwich or all eight, the Wendy's 4 for 4 has a sandwich for you. So try them all and pick your favorite. Now that's deliciously different. And participating Wendy's for a limited time. Offer not valid in Alaska and Hawaii. There's absolutely nothing traditional about my small business. And when it comes to technology, I need someone who understands my unique needs. That's where my Dell Small Business Technology Advisor comes in. With one phone call, he sets me up with tailored products and services. And when my advisor is focused on my tech, I can focus on my small business. Get end-to-end -end solutions with the help of a Dell advisor, including PCs featuring Intel Core processors. Call an advisor today at 877-BY-DELL. Take Hawks basketball with you anywhere. Get the SFM Go app in the Google Play or iTunes store and stream on SFM Sports Channel 2. Back at the Heights Center, second half action about to be underway. Maryland Eastern Shore, 50 points in the first half. They lead 50-41 over Hampton. 
Taking a look at some other MEAC scores this afternoon. Halftime from Coppin State. Eagles trailing Savannah State 40 to 37. The Eagles looking for their first win in general. They're 0 for 16 thus far. Joining the Cleveland Browns with that un uh, unenviable distinction, shall we say. Morgan State, meanwhile, a five point lead over Florida AM at the break in Baltimore, 43 to 38. Later on tonight, Howard hosts Bethune Cookman. Dell State's got South Carolina State in town. And then one postponement, North Carolina A&T postponing their matchup against Norfolk State. The weather down in Greensboro just a little too now. We were there last year around this time when the big snowstorm hit. The game was delayed in Durham. and. Really, it is. Just nobody knows how to drive in the snow. Nobody knows how to work the snow. They can't clean it off. That's amazing. No, that's this. Equipment. This I can say. Yeah. This I can <laughs> say. Nobody knows how to properly plow a road. Yeah. But it only happens once a year. No, it doesn't happen, bro. There's no experience. <laughs> Hampton basketball as we begin the second half. Jermaine Morrow takes the inbound. Pirates moving left to right in this half. There's a handoff to Trent Street who works in left baseline over McIntosh. Ball rattles around and it's corralled by Myron Thomas on the rebound. McIntosh jogs it across the timeline right to left for the Hawks. Starters on the floor for Eastern Shore including Jones and Frost. Jones left elbow bounces it out for Frost. 23 first half points. Green step by Myron Thomas and a backdoor play with Myron Thomas. Jump step into the lane and a little scoop shots up and in. Impressive play by Thomas. Under control around the basket. And on the feed from Ahmad Frost. It's an 11-point Hawk lead. Their biggest of the afternoon. 52-41. to 41, One minute into the half. Here is Trayvon Barnes. A handoff to Hextall. Now they work it tomorrow. Right baseline. Underneath the basket. There's the feed for Malik Trent Street. Trent Street with the bucket. The assist from Auro. 52-43. to 43. Eastern Shore leading. One minute into the half exactly. Jones on the left wing, looking inside for Frost. A mod left baseline posting up against Morrow. He goes up with the right hand and he's swatted away by Trent Street. But Frost gets it back, pulls up from the left wing, and he swirls it on home. You won't let me lay it up on you? Fine, I'm just going to shoot it from 25. 55 to 43, Frost with 26. How can Hampton leave him out there? That's Seven three-pointer. And now they leave Wilson Fisher open for 18 foot on the left wing. That's no good. Rebound harangued by McIntosh. McIntosh dancing into the front court. Pitches back for Jones, a right wing three. Got it. Tyler Jones from deep. Back-to-back -back trays for the Hawks. 58 to 43. Two minutes into the second half, and the Hawks coming out swinging once again. This is Trent Street, takes it right baseline, cut off by McIntosh, flings it to the left wing for Hextall. Hextall pulls up the free throw line and rolls it home. 58 to 45, Hampton getting a little bit closer. Eastern Shore basketball goes McIntosh. Jogs it up court, well, walks it up court. Slow jog. <laughs> Into the attacking end. McIntosh dribbling towards the right sideline. A fake a handoff to Frost. McIntosh takes it himself against Morrow, and he draws the foul on Jermaine Morrow. A little misdirection. I think everybody was looking at the handoff to Frost, and McIntosh took it himself to the rack, and he's got a chance for free throws. McIntosh, two for two from the line today. That's how he scored his only points. First shot flung up and good. McIntosh in his last five, he's been an all-around player for the Hawks. Hmm. Second free throw, push it to the left, but a lane violation as okay. Silver got into the paint too soon. They'll get Barnes for it, and McIntosh will get another chance. 15 points, 5.5 rebounds, 4.5 assists per game, over 37 minutes over his last five. And he shanks the second one as well, but Jones chases down the rebound and lays it off the glass, and good. Tyler Jones with 
18 points as he chases down those second chancers. 61 to 45. The Hawks up 16 with 17 and a half to play in the half. And now a uh, kick as Myron Thomas kicked it into Tyler Jones' chest. And that's yeah. the only thing that's going to slow down TJ today is a, uh, the Hawks a are out flying hustling. objects. They're out, they're out hustling Hampton. They're out playing Hampton. Uh, but they seem to want it a little bit more right now. We hope that continues. Hextile the inbound, and he flings it in for Trent Street. Malik cut off. Now he stutter steps left side of the paint, and alley up to Charles Wilson Fisher, who misses the layup. Rebound tipped once and controlled by Jones. Here comes McIntosh up for the Hawks. Threads a pass for Frost, and Frost falling out of bounds. Couldn't quite get the handle on the pass. And Eastern Shore moving a bit too quick that time. They'll turn it over. Yeah, we, we need to get a shot every time, see if we can pad this lead. As you know, Hampton's going to make a little run. Hextall has it for the Pirates. Crosses in the front court. Right sideline. Near interception. And Trent Street, a foul as McIntosh came swooping in for the steal. He tripped him up. Helps him up here. A pat on the head from each. Hustle. Mutual hustle appreciated That's right. by That's both right. Two players. guys hustling. That's not a problem. Not at all. 17 even to play in the second half. Trent Street to inbound. Zips it in for Wilson Fisher. There's a hand up to Morrow in the backcourt. Now it's Hextall. Wilson Fisher, top of the circle, looking in, fakes the pass. Now finds Morrow on the right wing. Jermaine, screen set. Frost on him closely. Crossover dribble, working. Kicks it out to Wilson Fisher on the right corner. Six to shoot. Pulls up with the right elbow. Yes! Charles Wilson Fisher tickles the twine. 61 to 47 as... It's a toy football has just gotten onto the floor. Some kids playing from behind the baseline. And uh, well, that's first for this year. <laughs> well, they shouldn't be back there playing. That's some, nah. The player steps on that ball and messes up an ankle. That's bad news. Yeah, exactly. Happened to this kid in Chicago. He fell on his elbow, and then next thing you know, you could throw 103 mile an hour fastballs. Oh, wait, maybe that was a movie. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Wrong one. McIntosh had it swatted out on his uh, inbound attempt, so Myron Thomas to fling it in. McIntosh guarded closely by Trent Street. Low serpentining into the front court. Jump pass him on Frost. Left corner for three. Short. A rare miss and a rebound for Wilson Fisher, who climbs the ladder. Flings up for Hextall in the front court for Hampton. Cuts across the paint. Step jumper from the Neak logo, and he buries it. Trey, uh, Greg Hextall, 12 point Hawk lead, 61 to 49. 16 and change of play. And the second half. And Myron Thomas fouled about 35 feet from the bucket by Jermaine Morrow, a reach-in foul on the handoff from McIntosh. That's his second. That's three. Three. That's three Ooh. on Morrow. Yes. That's not a smart foul by Morrow, 35 feet from the vest. If I'm the Hawks, I try and attack Morrow right now. Go right up in his face. They fling it into Jones' left baseline. Jones fouled by Trayvon Barnes in the shot attempt. Barnes not happy. He thought he got all ball, but TJ wearing him down from inside, and Tyler Jones with two free throws. The Hawks showing patience around the basket once they get the ball in there. And they hesitate a little bit, and, and they're getting fouled. That's three against Barnes as well, so two of the big pieces for Hampton. In foul trouble in the second half. Jones buries his first free throw. Hawks having a good day shooting from the foul line. Six of seven. Check that seven of eight now after the make. John Hogg's in. Anamod Frost out. Jones, 63% foul shooter. Up and it rattles home. 20 for Jones. So Frost and Jones combined with 46 of the points. They're almost outscored Hampton on their own. 63 to 49 Hawks under 16 to play. Coming up on immediate timeout. They thread the needle inside. It's intercepted by Cam Baycoat. Right to left move the Hawks in transition. Zip it to McIntosh. Now Hogs left wing three. Someone got a hand on it, but Jones gets the rebound offensively. And the Hawks control, and they'll have about 17 seconds to shoot it as the clock did not reset. McIntosh pats his head, dribbles to the right sideline. Saps his dribble, now jabs in. Back out, Hogs, now McIntosh with six to shoot. Pull up from the right wing for three. Front iron, rebound to Pirates. 
go up for it. Now it's on the floor, and Hoggs comes down with it. TJ spins left side of the lane, lays it up. He's fouled, and more free throws coming up for Jones. As the Hawks with some hustle, hustle two hustle. offensive rebounds on one possession. Jones has chance for two more points when we come back. 15-20 to play in the second half of your score. Eastern Shore 63, Hampton 49 on the Shore Sports Network and sfmsports.net. Hello, I'm your waiter, Serge. Would you like to hear the specials? Do they include any wings, hot and cold sandwiches, and Smith Island cake? No, you'll have to go to M Street Grill for that. All right, see ya. Hawks fans, you want to sink your teeth into great food and watch the game, right? Make M Street Grill your new home. It's a sports bar and restaurant conceived by hospitality and tourism management program students and owned by a Hawk alumni, M Street Grill, in the Princess Anne University Village, 410-621-5040. In the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, success for our student athletes isn't just measured by wins and losses, points on the scoreboard, or individual stats. It's also measured by their performance in the classroom, in the community, and ultimately graduation. Our student athletes aren't just playing to win a single game. They're playing to win at life because games end, but life keeps on going. The MIAC, educating student athletes for the game of life. This is Maryland Eastern Shore Basketball from SFNSports.net. Center where they are jumping on it. Eastern Shore jumping on a 14 point lead. 63 49 over Hampton with 15 20 to play in the ball game. The big performers for the Hawks. Ahmad Frost with 26 points. Tyler Jones with 20 points and 7 rebounds. The two man wrecking crew for the Hawks nearly outscoring Hampton on their own. And now Jones with two more free throws as he was fouled going into the break. First shot up, and it's off the front iron. And Dave, this is about where Oregon State made their move on Wednesday night. Hawks led by 18, and then the Bears went on a 16 to nothing run. Second free throw for Jones, up and good. One of two for TJ, who's got 21. 64 to 49, Hawks 15 and change the play. Nine for 11 for the free throw line, so That'll keep do. that up too. Keep that up. Hextall, right channel for the Pirates. Chest pass for Carver on the left wing. A handoff now to Trent Spreet, who spots up from three and shanks it short. Rebound. Karam's out of bounds, and the Hawks take over. The uh, team rebound, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> the yes, I, uh, I never figured that out. I mean, why count a rebound? It goes out of bounds. The omniscient team <laughs> gets that rebound. <laughs> McIntosh walks it into the front court for the Hawks. This is Hogs on the side line and now it's McIntosh right in front of Bobby Collins. Jones and low in the backcourt. Left wing. Screen set by Jones. McIntosh takes the free throw line. Scoop pass inside for Myron Thomas and Myron Thomas the two-handed jam. Works around Hextall and hammers it home. He's got 10. 66 to 49 Eastern Shore. 14 and change the play. This is Hextall, top of the circle. Scoop pass to Carver. Trey Carver at the left elbow. Kicks it back for Hextall. McIntosh guarding with 10 to shoot. Lob to Trent Street in the left corner. And he'll take a baseline against McIntosh. Jones comes over to help. They juggle it around. A pass intercepted. McIntosh has it. Right sideline. Here come the Hawks. Logan in transition. Scoop pass to Jones. Reverse layup. Good. Tyler Jones on the feed from McIntosh. And Lowe's got a massive smile on his face after to that pass. 68 to 49 Eastern Shore up 19 under 14 minutes to play. Jermaine Morrow has been shut out in the first half at the right elbow. Bounces it for Colbert and Colbert he dropped the shoulder and Tyler Jones on the defensive end this time. An offensive foul. Colbert with the infraction. Comes a mod frost into the game. Perhaps after a bit of a rest, he has heated himself back up. 
you know, the Hawks are playing well overall. They're not hustling, they're playing defense, they're making the appropriate baskets, and they're shooting the lights out of it. So far, it's been a complete game, but there's still 14 minutes to play. We'll see. Frost into the front court, scoop pass to McIntosh. Low in the back court, marked by Trent Street, dribbling to the right sideline, spinning. Trent Street on him like butter on toast. He reaches in and commits the foul. That's some uh, spoiled butter right there. Hampton has been making some fouls way far away from the basket. They haven't been looking for Morrow on the offensive end, so it's and been, they're like, I mean, they're a little out of sync. And look at this, six fouls against Hampton with 13.34 to play. Yeah, be Flipping the script, it's, it's Hampton in foul trouble in this half. McIntosh takes a handoff on the inbound, crossover at the free throw line, no look pass inside. TJ at the left baseline, turn around, hook shot, air ball, rebound, pinballs in the air, and it's Karam controlled by Hextall. Left to right move the Pirates. Morrow in transition, works around. Frost just steps around him and bursts to the basket. Jermaine Morrow with a quick step. I think that was his first bucket in the second half. It was. 68-51, to 51. Hawks. McIntosh in transition again, again, and another deep foul. This time, it's Jaquan Carlisle, and so begins the free throw game for the Hawks. final 13.08 for the Hawks. This war of attrition at the line. McIntosh, nine assists for Logan McIntosh in this game. He has been the distributor. Career high for him, 11 assists. He got him against North Carolina A&T about a year ago as he hits his first free throw. The Hawks are 10 or 12 from the three throw line. McIntosh's only points have come from the line so far. Second one up, back iron, and uh, a foul in the lane as Ahmad Frost. Oh, a little shove. Too much <laughs> shove to get the elevation on that he rebound the 6'9 attempt. guy out of the way. That's all right. Cam Bako back in as Logan McIntosh gets a breather. 69 to 51. The lead is 18 with 13 and change to play. Hampton basketball. Jaquan Carlisle trots across the timeline. Lateral to Hexto, and now it's Trent Smith Street. Trent Street flings it right corner for Hextall, and he travels. Stuck in the muck on the right wing. And a Hampton giveaway. Byron Thomas to inbound. He flings it in for Frost and Ahmad. Saunters into the front court across the big maroon M. This is Hogs on the right sideline for the Hawks. Now it's Frost again. Frost, screen set by Jones. Thought about the three from the right wing, and so he's stripped. Myron Thomas comes down with it. Myron dribbling the right wing. The 18-footer rims out after the bank, and a rebound for Carlisle in transition. Feeds up for Trent Street, and Thomas nearly with the block and said Trent Street with a layup and in. Transition bucket for Hampton, 69-53. And Tyler Jones, look out, TJ. Nearly stripped from behind by a swooping pirate defender. If you're the Hawks... It's the catch-22. If you play the fast pace again, you could you give it away. If you play slow, you could get out of rhythm. Now it's Tyler Jones on the right wing for the shore. This is Frost working inside for Myron Thomas. Defender fell down in the easy, easy lay-in for Myron Thomas. As Greg Hextall was flat on his back, and the official stops play as... Everybody's being sent to their benches right now. I'm looking for a fragment file. Oh, yeah. That's a reason why he would be Not flat on his, right. on his back. Well, Myron's been called for a couple of those this uh, year, yes. throwing the elbow. Well, you're, I was looking in the back course, so I didn't see. Dave, did yeah. you see what happened? No, I just when I turned and looked, the guy was already on the ground. Well, for now, it stands 12.09 to play in the second half. Maryland Eastern Shore leading Hampton 71-53. to It's a big, big time in the game here. They might take away Myron's basket right here. If he is called for the flagrant foul. And the rules, all you need to really know, flagrant one works just like a technical foul. Right. Flagrant two, he's ejected from the game. All right, let's see if we have the word from the public address announcer. Guess not. I guess it's not a flagrant foul. 
as Hampton's going to inbound as if they're just taking it out after a basket. So, wow. all right. We'll take that. He's all clear. So, Myron Thomas with the bucket. It's 71-53. 12 even to play in the second half. Morrow cuts across the paint for Hampton. A little jumper from 10 foots in. Marrow with the easy bucket. 71-55, Hawks. Hans as the Hawks trap behind the timeline here. Baycoat crosses into front court. Double teamed and stripped by Carlisle. J Carlisle with a strip. Morrow with the transition layup. <laughs> Nearly fouled by a Hogs, but Morrow with back-to-back -back buckets. 71 to 57 Hawks. 11 and a half to play in the ball game. Coming up on a media timeout. Frost flings it to Baycoat and Cam calls a timeout. 11-29 to play in the second half. We'll step aside. Hawks lead 71 to 57, but Hampton with a couple of baskets from the All Conference selection Morrow on the Shore Sports Network and SFMSports.net. The Eastern Shore is a perfect place to visit year round. A gem hidden on the lower shore is the Henson. Located in the heart of Princess Anne on the picturesque campus of the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. The Henson is the perfect choice for campus visits, business trips, reunions, meetings, and relaxing getaways. Check into the Henson and we'll take care of the rest. Book online at umes.edu slash Henson. Committed to serving you even better. McCready Health Immediate Care and Imaging Center in Princess Anne. Stop by when you need us and experience our expanded services, including 3D mammography for advanced early detection of breast cancer. Conveniently located next to Food Lion in Princess Anne and open seven days a week from 10 to 8. Most insurance plans are accepted and no appointments are needed at McCready Health Immediate Care and Imaging Center. McCready Health, with you for life. This is Maryland Eastern Shore Basketball from sfmsports.net. Back in Princess Anne, 11.29 to play on a Saturday afternoon in the MEAC. Maryland Eastern Shore leading Hampton, 71-57. to Will DeVore with you alongside Dave Bird on the Shore Sports Network. Hampton trying to work their way back, but they're being outscored by five in this half as well. Pirates shooting 67% from the floor but in the second half, but Maryland Eastern Shore keeping their pace at 7 for 13. They're shooting 54%. So, David, it's really only these last couple of possessions it seems like the Hawks have taken a couple off. Yes, that's right. And they're shooting free throws well, so just got to be take care of the basketball over the last uh, 10 minutes, and uh, we're going to get a W. Hawks have the basketball. This is McIntosh, the backcourt, slings it for Hawks on the left sideline. Sean chased back towards midway line and stripped by... Trent Street and a foul called on the strip as are they getting yes they're getting hogs insult to injury the turnover and then the foul and that'll be another media timeout as the last one was the full 30 that becomes a full and this is the proper under 12. So 11-19 to play in the second half. We'll step aside again. 71-57 Hawks on the Shore Sports Network and SFMSports.net. Lower Shore Immediate Care. Quality care close to you. Open seven days a week. Just a short drive to Princess Anne. Located next to Caesars Pizza. No appointment necessary. Be seen promptly. Quality care by caring professionals. Jack Bird, Kevin Mull, and Megan East. Locally owned by your neighbors. Visit LowerShoreImmediateCare.com and remember to like them on Facebook. Providing top-notch care for the Lower Shore and beyond. Lower Shore Immediate Care. If you're looking for some good old-fashioned fun with a new twist, Southbound Alley in Salisbury is the place to be. With delicious food and drink specials, 20 lanes of bowling, and the best arcade and billiards room in town, Southbound Alley is a great place to bring the whole family. Southbound Alley has private rooms ready for your next event, holidays, birthdays, business outings, and more. Located in Salisbury on Southbound Route 13, across from Fruitland Walmart. Call for details or like us on Facebook. Southbound Alley in Salisbury is the place to be. Back at the Heights, 71-57, Eastern Shore leading Hampton with 11-19 to play in the ball game. But a couple of Hawk turnovers have conspired to plant the idea in the Pirates' heads that they could come back and win this one. Still on the bench, Edward Joyner Jr. talking up his team, calling out the play. 
Carrera, the winningest head coach in Division I history for the Hampton Pirates, who has bred for this job over the last decade, a top 20 mid-major assistant in 2008. For that, coach at Johnson C. Smith, his alma mater. Now, the dean of the Hampton Pirates, who will join the Big South next year. Here's Hextall in the backcourt for the Pirates, dancing against Myron Thomas, takes it right side of the lane, falling away, hook shot, strong, and a rebound foul. Is it staying on this end? It appears to be. Look at Sean Hoggs again. Third foul against Hoggs in his second consecutive in the span of about 20 seconds. Colin Gaynor checking back in as Hoggs takes a seat. Malik Trent Street to inbound for Silver from underneath his own basket. 20 seconds on the clock for Hampton as he flings it in for Hextall and goes right back to Trent Street. And an offensive foul as they'll get Colbert for tangling up with Myron Thomas right before the shot attempt from Trent Street. Yeah. And the Hawks appreciate that. Full court pressure now by Hampton. Trayvon Barnes back into the game for Hampton. Working with three fouls. Hawk basketball. Pirates bringing a bit of a press. Frost has it as he'll bring it up court against Trent Street. Zigzags across the big M. And he's into the front court now. Here's McIntosh in the left channel, deep towards the timeline. McIntosh shakes off his man, now turns around and charges in and draws another foul from beyond the arc. Jay Quan Carlisle sticking to him like glue. And the ref's not a fan of glue today. No, they put their hands on the be a foul. It's good for us. We knock down these free throws. Uh, Hampton cannot catch it. That's three on Carlisle, and that's nine on Hampton in the second half. We're not even halfway through. Double bonus time at the next foul for the Hawks. And McIntosh's first of a one and one is up and in. McIntosh doesn't have a field goal yet today, but he's got five points all from the line. As we'll see Lysander Bracey for the second time in this game, checking in for Carlisle with his three. McIntosh shrug of the shoulder, deep breath, second free throw, in and out, rebound for Trent Street. Pushing it up court left to right for the Pirates, it's Jermaine Morrow who takes it to the hoop himself and he gets the roll in. Blink and you'll miss him, Jermaine Morrow, 72 to 59, Eastern Shore up, 10 and a half to play. The Hampton Bench starting to get loud, chanting for defense. McIntosh, top of the circle, driving in against Trent Street. He's stripped, gets it back, pitches it out for Gaynor in the left corner. Now it's Myron Thomas, contested left wing three, strong. And Barnes climbs the ladder. Here come the Pirates, stepping up as Morrow, stop and pop from the left wing. He missed it, but a rebound inside and a foul on the shot attempt. The second chance for Craig Hextall. The foul is on Colin Gaynor. His second, and it's two free throws for Greg Hextall. Hextall, criminal justice major at Hampton. 15th in the league in field goal percentage. When he gets to point blank, he doesn't miss off, and he drains his first free throw. 75% foul shooter. Averages a couple of free throws per game. Hextall with six points today and four rebounds. Been largely quiet. And the second free throw, good. Made them both. Hampton didn't even contest it. They were so confident. 72 to 61 Eastern Shore. The lead's down to 11. Coming up on 10 to play. And McIntosh jukes Trent Street out of his shoes. <laughs> his shoes are somewhere in the third row behind us, Dave. That was incredible. McIntosh now with the Jones straight away. Crowd loves it. Hand off to Frost, the free throw line. Driving in. Takes it to the rack himself. Counter to the foul. The Ahmad Frost show continues. From the left post, he goes up for the and one. Lysander Bracey with the foul, and Frost with a chance for a three-point play. 28 points for Ahmad Frost. Unreal. 
Jaquan Carlisle checking back in as uh, Bracey has shown to be out of his element trying to guard Frost. Yeah. On top of it, the Hampton guards keep trying to guard us way out from the basket, and our guards, Frost and McIntosh, are uh, just going by them. The free throw for Frost Good. swirls it in. 29 for Ahmad. A career high. 75-61 Hawks under 10 to play. Carlisle picks it up halfway up the backcourt. Now Hextall has it in the front court. Hextall juking against Gaynor. Goes back door against Morrow. This door slams shut, and Morrow has to retreat. On the left sideline, guarded by Frost. The screen set. Jones comes over to help. Left baseline again. Morrow with a float shot. Strong. And it's corralled by McIntosh. Here comes Lowe. Spinning around Carlisle. Crosses the timeline. On the left channel, McIntosh. Called to the right sideline. He dribbles there. Working baseline. Stops. Retreats. Dribbles out. Looking in for Jones in the right baseline. Jones against Barnes. What will he do here? Faking in. Now he posts up. Double team. Survives the swoop. And a foul call. Too much hard defense for the Pirates against Jones. Is able to create the chance. Barnes and Morrow each got in. And the foul appears to be on... Oh, it's away from the basketball, in fact. And Myron Thomas is at the free throw line instead. I was looking at the guy in the lane. Oh, yeah. Look at Hextall with his second foul. And Myron Thomas back to the free throw line. His first trip. Myron, a 66% foul shooter. That number was in the 70s, but he struggled over the last two days. Uh, games, rather. Game days. First free throw up, and it was halfway down and in and out. Quick note on Ahmad Frost with 29 points. The last Hawk to score 30. Ryan Andino had 31 at North Carolina A&T almost a year ago, January 9th last year. Myron crouches down low. Second free throw. Back iron. Callan Gaynor gets the rebound off the glass. Missed it short. And a rebound for Hextall. Tough break for the Hawks. Here come the Pirates. Left to right. Hextall circling up on the perimeter ahead off the Trent Street. Trent Street floater from the paint. And he missed it, but he's fouled. Crowd behind is calling for a foul. And it's little things like that, Dave, but it's little things that make you think the back of your head that Hampton's still in this one. Missing two free throws, missing a second chance yeah, points put, there. Great rebound by Gaynor. Yes, it was. Great rebound, he just missed the putback. Malik Trent Street, Portsmouth, Virginia native, returned back home to Tidewater by way of TCU, and he rattles home his first free throw. Leandre Thomas coming back in as Myron Thomas in Bobby Collins' doghouse after missing two free throws. Trent Street, an 80% foul shooter. The rare times he does get to the stripe. Junior with four dribbles, left-handed shot, nothing but net. 75 to 63, the lead is 12, under nine to play. Gaynor flings it into Jones as the Pirates swarm. Jones takes it himself into the front court in post position, deep in the backcourt. Now he gets it to McIntosh, right baseline, turns on a dime, and Leandre Thomas foul on the shot attempt. McIntosh trying to distribute that time, and Morrow commits the foul. And for Jermaine Morrow, Yes, it is. The undisputed best player for Hampton has four fouls with 8.43 remaining. And now we'll see Charles Wilson Fisher coming back in for Silver. Leandre Thomas, 6'10 freshman from St. Petersburg, a 48% free throw shooter. And that number goes down as he misses again. You know, each missed free throw day. Drip, drip, drip. <laughs> we don't want to hear that. And the Hawks have got Morrow out of game. They have to take advantage five. of that right now. Morrow and his 19 points on the bench. Malik Trent Street's got 11. He's the highest scoring uh, tenured player on the floor for Hampton at the moment. Thomas rattles home his second. So one of two for Leandre. 76 to 63 Hawks, 842 to play. This is Carlisle up with it for Hampton. Flings it for Hextow. Takes himself. Alley up down low for Charles Wilson. Fisher loses the handle. Kicks it back out for Carlisle. Left wing three. Front iron. And Thomas climbs the ladder for the rebound. And he flings it off of Trent Street's foot. Leandre Thomas working down low and grabbing the board. 
his second of the game. Gainer to inbound from underneath his own basket. He'll be marked by Wilson Fisher and his long 6'9 arms. Into Frost. Now Gainer against the full court. It's McIntosh. Logan double team. Nearly swooped away Trent Street. The ball deflected out of bounds off of Silver. Colin Gainer to inbound right in front of us. Eight seconds ticking off the shot clock that time. The Hawks got to get it up. Yeah, we need to get a ball in McIntosh or, or Frost's hands, obviously. Leandre was open, but they get it into Frost instead. And Amat Frost across the timeline. Frost circling up, pumps the brakes, and hands it off to McIntosh on the left channel. Logan spins around. He's marked by Trent Street. Free throw line. A little float shot. Too strong. Front iron and a rebound attempt. Leandre Thomas brings Malik Trent Street to the deck. Didn't time his jump uh, properly. And that's number four against Leandre Thomas. That's free throws now. I Bonus time for Hampton. One and one. Byron Thomas back in as Leandre takes a seat. Now it comes down to free throw shooting. And if you're looking for an ominous sign, Hampton, by far the best free throw shooting team in the MEAC. 79% from the line. That's pretty good. Take a look at some of these numbers free throw shooting wise. North Carolina a is at 75. Most of the teams in the high 60s or low 70 ranges in Hampton, 4% better than any other school. And Trent Street hits his first. And that's why they're going to do well in the Big South, I believe. Yeah, free throws sure. win those close games, as Morgan State found out, as Hampton May found out here, as Trent Street rattles home, too. 76 to 65, and a quick steal from Charles Wilson Fisher. 76 to 67. A single digit deficit, and another steal from Hampton. Charles Wilson Fisher, finger roll, and one. Hampton's ballistic on the bench. An incredible individual effort from Charles Wilson Fisher. He's got a chance for five points in about four seconds, and that brings us into a much-needed break of the media timeout. Hampton's on the way back. The Hawk lead down to 76-69, 7.57 to play on the Shore Sports Network and sfmsports.net. All money managers may seem pretty much the same. But while some money managers may recommend high commission investment products, Fisher Investments avoids them. Some money managers may have hidden and layered fees. Fisher Investments never does. And while some money managers are happy to earn commissions from you, whether you do well or not, Fisher Investments fees are structured so we do better when you do better. In other words, we're structured to be on your side. Maybe that's why most of our clients come to us from other money managers. Talk with us and find out why so many experienced investors are switching to and staying with Fisher Investments. Fisher Investments, clearly better money management. Investments in securities involve the risk of loss. Visit us at fisherinvestments.com to find out what we can do for you. We now pause 10 seconds for station identification. The flagship station for Maryland Eastern Shore Basketball is WTGM Salisbury, Delmarva's Fox Sports 960. Back on Delmarva. Maryland Eastern Shore leading Hampton 76-69, 7.57 to play. Back end of our Saturday doubleheader on the Shore Sports Network. The Hawk women falling 70-65 to to the Hampton Lady Pirates early today. The men trying to avoid the same fate, but they've seen their large lead slip away. It's down to just seven. And Charles Wilson Fisher, who had back-to-back -back steals and layups, Underneath his own basket is a chance for five points in the span of about five seconds. He's at the free throw line. Three point play. And it's converted. Nothing but net. 
Two possession games, 76 to 70. Under eight to play. Full court press for Hampton. They have all the momentum right now, and McIntosh barely gets it in ahead of the five second violation. Now he sprints into the front court, zigzagging around Silver Defenders. Scoop pass around, reach to Daycoat. Now it's Jones on the right baseline, spinning against Hextall. He's blocked from behind by Barnes. Byron Thomas swoops in, tries to deflect it. Right. And he does. It's out of bounds, and Hampton takes over. I thought it was white ball. He's not a white, didn't he? Yeah, it's off the white. Sure. Yeah, it was a but it's a gray ball. Bang, it's bang. Hampton's ball. Pirates have all the momentum as Maryland Eastern Shore. They're a bit antsy. Will it be deja vu all over again, or can the Hawks tighten the screws? Trent Street deep from three. Front iron. Rebound tipped once, and Myron climbs the ladder for it. Big board for Thomas, his fifth. Ahmad Frost into the front court. Relatively quiet second half for him, just six points out of his 29. Now Frost in the right corner. Jones sets a screen. Ahmad centers up. Now jabs in, spin move, hook shot with the right hand. He's fouled in the paint. And oh, Bobby Collins loves it. He was sort of bouncing up and down. He wanted that ball to fall. Yeah. Almost did. And for a hex stall, that's number three. Two shot foul. Ahmad Frost sitting at 29 points right now. 76% foul shooter. 76% free throw shooter. And the first one's nothing but net. <laughs> now for Frost, a chance for redemption. If you'll remember, he missed two free throws inside the final minute on Wednesday night as part of Morgan State's comeback victory. But 30 points for Ahmad Frost, the first hawk in over almost a year. Yeah, and he's got 31, more. even evening Andino from that night in Greensboro last year. 78 to 70, seven minutes to play. Hawks shooting 15 to 22 from the line. Into the right corner, this is Hampton's Hextall, a handoff to Barnes. Now Hextall again straight away, he'll dribble out. Going in against Frost, jump pass right wing, three ball from Carlisle, short, rebound, it's Frost, he comes down with it. And the Pirates swarming yeah. on him, and they foul. Yeah. How about the last two possessions for the Pirates? They settled for the deep threes both times after all that momentum. Instead of working inside, you're right. Jaquan Carlisle with his fourth foul. Carlisle with four, Mara with four, Barnes, Hextall each have three. And now Ahmad Frost with two more free throws. Remember, it's double bonus the rest of the way for the shore. Six minutes and 44 seconds for the Hawks to shoot three throws. Tick, clock, tick. Frost, 31 points. He has a chance for two more at the line right here. High arc, front iron, backboard, and in. Last Hawk to score 35 points. Devin Martin did it against Central Penn back on December 22nd of 2015. Frost has 32, the most for a Hawk since then. Frost a couple of dribbles and his second free throw, good. Four for four over his last two trips. He's got 33. Leads double digits again, 80 to 70 Hawks, 640 to play. Pirate basketball, this is Hextall for Hampton on the feet of Trent Street, and then Hextall sneaks past the defense for the two-handed jam. Oh, it was too easy. 80 to 72 Hawks. Now McIntosh dances into the front court up the left sideline. Oh, he nearly dragged his feet. He's double teamed, and Silver gets a hand on it out of bounds. Oh, boy, that was close. <laughs> Multiple ways. Yeah, in front of us, Hawks catch right. a break. Hawk Several ball. breaks. McIntosh inbound from his left sideline. No, Frost will do it instead. Only four seconds ticked off the shot clock that time. Frost looking to inbound. It's into Jones, and Frost takes the handoff on the left channel from the Jesse Williams signature. Frost standing like a statue. Now he centers up, dribbling left to right on the perimeter towards the Hawk sideline. Flings it in for Jones. Jones right baseline makes his move underneath the basket. Foul from fine. behind. Yeah. Trayvon Barnes got too much arm for Tyler Jones. Yeah, let Tyler get baseline that time underneath. A good move. Another spin move by Tyler. He's been doing it all day. He's got 23 points. Four fouls on Barnes. That makes three Hampton starters 
in the danger zone right now. And two of them in the game. Jones, first free throw, rolls in. He's down. got 24 and 7. Coming alive once again against the Pirates. Proving to be Blackbeard himself against this monthly crew as he missed a second one. Strong back iron. 81 to 72 sure, six even to play. They try to go back door and somebody got a toe on it on the shore side. So underneath the basket, Hampton to inbound. Malik Trent Street. And Myron Thomas has face flings it back to Barnes. They let them open on the left wing, and he'll rattle it home from deep. Why not? He says. Trayvon Barnes. He shoots one three a game, but he hits him at 36%, and he hits it. A timeout, 30 seconds for Ed Joyner. We'll stick with you. 5.57 to play. Eastern Shores lead six. It's 81 to 75. Eastern Shore is going to have to keep scoring, Dave. That's the only way yeah. to get around this. They keep making three throws. And they do so far. 18 for 26. So sure. 69%. Not stellar, but not horrendous. Overall, the Hawks shooting 55% from the floor. This would be their best shooting day by far against a Division I team this year. Their top shooting day overall. Let's be their top overall. They had 51% against Valley Forge at the opener. All right, Hawks to inbound underneath their basket. This is McIntosh dancing around, looking for the open man. He flings it into Frost, who's trapped in the backcourt. Up to Myron Thomas. Myron for Baycoat, and now Hampton drops back in defense, not committing any of those silly fouls so far away from the basket. Basically, the middle third of the court. Yeah, two of them got too many fouls to commit anyhow because it'll be fouled out. Frost with it, centers up after the screen from Jones. Pick and roll. Jones left yeah. open, left wing for three. Yeah. Yes, sir. Tyler Jones with 27, 84 to 75, and now Trent Street glides to the basket for an easy lay-in. 84-77, Hawks, 520 to play. Frost serpentining across the line. And now they'll sit on it with 513 to play. Cross left sideline with Hampton bench chanting for defense. Cross free throw line. Step back at the right elbow. The Myron Thomas who fell over. Nice the left elbow. Baycoat left corner with 10 to shoot. Baycoat circling in and he takes it to the rack himself and he lays it in. Cam Baycoat saw the open lane and accelerated. 86 to 77. Under five to play. The Hawks up nine. Hampton basketball's Jermaine Morrow who's backing with four fouls. Floats it to the right corner for Trent Street. Inside Charles Wilson Fisher. Turn around. Jumper over Jones from the post. 86 to 79. Hawks up. Yeah, well, good. As long as we keep trading baskets, that's fine. Four and a half remaining. Yes, trading baskets. The Hawks have the lead. This is Frost straight away. Finds Jones on the right wing. A handoff to Baycoat now. Cam in front of Coach Collins. Ten to shoot. Jones sets a screen. Cam taking it himself. Left side of the paint. Jump pass. McIntosh left corner three. Air ball. Right to Myron Thomas who lays it up off the glass and good. Well, a system sorts for McIntosh. Myron with the putback. 88 to 79. Coming up on four even to play. Here's Hextall dancing around the left wing. Inside for Charles Wilson. Fisher turn around 12-footer, short, and a rebound for McIntosh. Zigzagging into the front court. We're coming up on our final media timeout. McIntosh, marked by Morrow at the edge of the M. This pacing in the backcourt, 12 to shoot. McIntosh takes it, finds Jones, free throw line. He'll take it himself, no travel call. Somebody got a hand on it. Myron comes in for the rebound, and Wilson Fisher and Thomas getting tied up in the paint. It's a jump ball, and the arrow points to the shore. They'll have six to shoot when we come back. 3.33 to play. Eastern Shore 88, Hampton 79 on the Shore Sports Network and sfmsports.net. 
The Eastern Shore is a perfect place to visit year-round. A gem hidden on the lower shore is the Henson. Located in the heart of Princess Anne on the picturesque campus of the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. The Henson is the perfect choice for campus visits, business trips, reunions, meetings, and relaxing getaways. Check into the Henson and we'll take care of the rest. Book online at umes.edu slash Henson. Training is about more than muscle. It's about inner strength. So I push myself. That's why I serve in the United States Coast Guard. I train with the best. A team that shares my drive and commitment. We collect intelligence, guard our shores against drug smugglers, and keep our waterways safe. Because our nation expects more. Discover a future that exceeds your expectations. Learn more at GoCoastGuard.com. This is Maryland Eastern Shore Basketball from sfmsports.net. And down the stretch we come. 3.33 to play from the Heights Center. Eastern Shore leading Hampton 88-79. to Final game these two teams will play against each other as conference foes, at least in the regular season. And it's been another dandy, David Bird. It's been fun to watch this. The Hawks have played very well today. They shot the basketball well. And they played with some enthusiasm. They've out-hustled uh, the Hampton team. It's been a good night so far at the Heights Center. A new year and a new Hawks in 2018. McIntosh to inbound for Eastern Shore. Six to shoot. They fling it up for Frost, who let it bounce into the backcourt. Five, four. He's got to hurry up now. Sprinting in three, two, one. From the right elbow, front iron, and a rebound flung towards the basket. Coming down with it, Hextall. Oh, he almost made that one. Here comes Hampton. It's Morrow dancing to the left baseline. Step back, 15-footer. Strong back iron. Rebound. Frost comes down with it. And a whistle as... Malik Trent Street is down on the floor. He might have rolled an ankle, helped up by his teammate Charles Wilson Fisher, favoring that right ankle, it looks like, or uh, no, his left leg. Left fire. Scrum for the ball late. These two teams really hustling for it, but Hawks have seemed to out-hustle Hampton, at least at various important stages in this game. Trent Street staying in the game. Myron Thomas gets to inbound now. And here is Tyler Jones. Flings up for McIntosh into the attacking end. Stops on a dime and lets everybody get back. He's pumping the brakes. Time is on their side. The Hawks up nine with three to go. Logan dancing in the backport, guarded by Hextall. Off the right wing, Jones to screen with nine to shoot. McIntosh makes his move. Scoop pass, Baycoat. Catch and shoot, right wing three. No good. And Myron yeah. Thomas and counter foul. the foul. Cam Baco with the air ball for the second time. Myron Thomas <laughs> feeds up off the glass. And that's number five against Trayvon Barnes. Myron Thomas a chance for a three-point play. He's got 16 and eight this afternoon. And then this is the other storyline, Dave. Myron Thomas is turning into a beast in the meat. Yeah, he's... he's He's playing well, only getting better, especially around the basket. His one free throw, back iron, rebound, corralled by Hextall. 90 to 79 Hawks, 245 to play. This is Hextall, slings it for Trent Street, right baseline, offensive foul, and there's Byron again. Yeah. He's set up at the cylinder and let Trent Street come to him. And Hampton's playing like they're a, a freshman team out there instead of a veteran team. How about it? Thomas gets the inbound for the Hawks. Now he slings across court to Frost, who jogs into the front court. Hawks can take off about 20 more seconds a clock. Ten more before they need to make a move. Now Frost will do just that, dribbling with his left hand, guarded loosely by... Wilson Fisher, nine to shoot now. He still hasn't made the move. Now it's seven, he does. Ahmad Frost looking, faking, middle of the lane, flings it for Myron underneath the basket, reverse lap, blocked, and a rebound for Hextall. Nice defense by Silver. Here come the Pirates. This is Morrow taking it himself, and three chances for the Pirates. None of them go in, but a late foul against Myron Thomas. That was too quick, Hampton. 
three big chances. Offensive rebound. To do oh, it. He kind of grabbed the rim on the last one, too. Yes, he did. But they'll get Myron Thomas for his fourth but foul. Maybe they're claiming that was a foul. Why he grabbed it. Wilson Fisher to the line. Born in Los Angeles, went to high school at Wheeler in Marietta, Georgia. A post grad here at the Quality Education Academy. He hits his first free throw. He had that one sequence where he had five points to get Hampton as close as, was it? It was uh, two possessions at least. They haven't gotten as close as that, though. Uh, closer than that, though. Second free throw. Rattles to the right. And a rebound for Myron Thomas falling out of bounds. He saves it. Nice hustle for Myron. Into the front court. And McIntosh stripped from behind. Is that Morrow? Yeah. It's Morrow. Bye-bye. Jermaine Morrow fouls out with two minutes to play. And now Hampton's best scoring threat is disqualified with two minutes to play and a 10-point hole. And they really haven't uh, looked at him in the second half, I, I don't think. Especially the beginning of the second half, he never even... Uh, he fouls him. out with 19, 19 points. Eight of them in the second half as McIntosh's first free throw, halfway down, and soups out. Yeah, and there you start to, to cringe, and, and uh, <laughs> you get your Peyton Manning face. Yeah. Sort of, yeah, okay. Second free throw rolls in. So McIntosh upset with himself for missing the first, but he does recover for one. Much needed that. Sean Hogs into the game. Cam Baycoat out for defense. 91 to 80 Hawks. Under two to play. McIntosh has six and nine assists. Here's Carlisle dancing to the left elbow and his pass. He didn't wire it to Wilson Fisher. It sails into the crowd. Unforced Hampton errors. Pirates might be sinking right here. Down 11, <laughs> under two. Baycoat's back in for offense. McIntosh has the inbound for the shore. Marked by Hextall. Just shy of the time. I know he crosses into the attacking end. McIntosh, free throw line, circling back out. Running rings around the Pirate defense. Hand off in the backcourt to Baycoat, left channel. Now it's Frost at the M. McIntosh has it with 10 to shoot. McIntosh driving in, free throw line. Stops underneath the Myron Thomas, and Myron saving an inbounds. Baycoat, Jones desperation three. Missed everything. Shot clock violation. Oh, McIntosh, he almost had that 10th assist. Myron just couldn't handle the rock. Yeah, Myron playing well around the basket. It was a great pass by McIntosh. 120 to play. Hawks lead by 11. Here's Jaquan Carlisle up court with it for Hampton. Guarded by Hogs, zips it for Hextall, left wing three, Strong skims the rim, and McIntosh chases down the board, it's off his foot, and staying on Hampton's end. Tough break for McIntosh. That's all right, more, clock, more time ran off the clock. 1.09 remaining. Hawks 69 seconds from a signature win at home. They have not lost at home this year. They would go to 4-0. Hextall's three from straight away. Missed it strong. Rebound put back. Missed by Colbert. And now a third oh, chance wow. for, there's that man again, Wilson Fisher. And he's fouled with a chance for two more free throws. That's one thing we do not want to do is foul. Oh, no, no. Not and yet. I believe that's Myron Thomas it is. Fifth foul for Myron Thomas. He'll be out of the game. Their fine effort, 16 points and nine rebounds, finishing just shy of a double-double for the second straight MEAC contest. Wilson Fisher buries his first. Cam Baycoats in as Myron Thomas takes his seat. Gets handshakes from his bench. A fine effort from Myron Thomas, who appears to be coming into his own at the right time. Wilson Fisher's second free throw, rims out, rebound. Jones had it, he had his arm held. And that fouls against Malik Trent Street. 101 remaining, 91 to 81 Hawks, and two free throws coming up for Tyler Jones. He's got 27. His career high, 28. That was his first ever game at the Heights Center, November 13th of last year against UMBC. And we were here watching that. Yes, we were. We were stunned and, and thrilled. Yeah. And Jones rolls it in. And with that, he ties his career high. 28 points for the sophomore from Atlantic City. 
the high roller tonight. And he shanks the second free throw, so he's stuck at 28. 91 to 81. One minute to play for the Hawks. This is Hextall, top of the circle for Hampton. Carlisle, desperation three from the right wing. Push to the right and a rebound for Tyler Jones. That's number nine for him. He's almost got a double-double. McIntosh jogging into the front court now as the light at the end of the tunnel growing brighter for Maryland Eastern Shore. Frost standing on the left sideline, letting all the seconds tick off. It's down to 10. Jones comes out to set a screen, and now Frost to the free throw line, takes it himself. He's blocked from behind, out of bounds. Six seconds remaining on the shot clock, but only 25 on the game clock. Baycoat to inbound from underneath his own basket. An 11-point Hawk lead. It's just about over, folks. Lob in for Jones on the right wing. Now McIntosh, right corner for three. Missed everything, but the rebound for Hampton. Pushing it up court. This is Colbert. Spins against Jones. Lays it up and in. 92-83 to 83 Hawks. McIntosh jogging up with it. And circles around his defenders. On the left baseline, five seconds remaining. He'll dribble it out. Hampton calls off the dogs. And Maryland Eastern Shore sends Hampton away from Princess Anne with a sunken ship. The Hawks, 92. The Pirates, 83. This rivalry comes to an end for now in thrilling fashion as Maryland Eastern Shore remains undefeated at home. How about that? The Hawks improved to 5-12 and 12 overall, 1-1 one and one in MEAC play, recovering from the disappointing loss at Morgan State. Hampton falls to 5-11, and 0-1 oh and in conference play. Hawks are back at it on Monday against the and here comes Bobby Collins, the victorious head coach. <laughs> coach, a complete game from start to finish. Your general thoughts on this one. <laughs> well, you would have told me you were going to score 92 points. <laughs> you know, but we, we've been playing well at home. Uh, you know, that's a good team. They made a run. We were able to knock down the important free throws tonight. We made some big baskets. The same baskets that we did not make against Morgan State the other night. But obviously, I'm glad to see that this team has some fight. We do have some fight. It's just each game, I just don't know what to expect. I just <laughs> wait. And I coach them up and just try to do the best that we possibly do as a coaching staff. Well, uh, Ahmad Frost just shot the lights out of the night, Bobby, especially the first half. And he had a career high uh, 33. Uh, it, it, he's, been, he's been playing well. Matter of fact, I think I, I saw him get injured a couple years ago. A year and a half ago, and I think he's in better shape and better, uh, and better for, ready to play. Uh, he's kind of the spirit, along with McIntosh. The two guards outplayed them uh, tonight. Yeah, um, when we're rebounding, we, we're making shots. I told our guys at halftime if we step up and take a charge, we were going to win the game. You took them. <laughs> and we took Certainly two charges. And, and I know that those two charges definitely. What's the difference in the game? I know Ahmad had 33 points, but at the same time, those two charges played a major role because then they didn't, they stopped just driving the basketball. It was the same thing that Central Penn did to get back into the game. It's the same thing that Morgan State did to get back into the game. Tonight, Hampton tried to do the same thing, and it took them out of what they really do, which we were able to defend a lot better than we did the first night. Just one part of the great post play. Tyler Jones, 28-9. Myron Thomas, 16-9. We saw at the beginning of the Morgan State game, this just appears to be a different front court for Maryland Eastern Shore. Now playing guys of their own size and skill level, it seems like they've come ready to play ball. Yeah, I'll, I'll, again, I just wait. <laughs> <laughs> I just wait and see what happens. Yeah. I'm going to coach them and, and, and get what I expect, but I just coach them. I guess it might be that Tyler Jones is really excited when they see Hampton Colors. Because last year in the tournament, I think he had 28. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just telling him every game, hey, that's blue out there. Go out there and play it to your capabilities. <laughs> 
There you go. That's well, tonight they came to play, Bobby. They, we, we, I think we out hustled them, out played them uh, for, from the from the first whistle on, and uh, that, that's a tribute to you getting the guys ready to play and giving 110. percent Thank you. Thank you. And the real quick before we let you go here, it's uh, well the Hampton series going on hiatus as they're leaving the conference at the end of the year. Uh, your thoughts on uh, for now at least the end of this, which turned out to be a great series against uh, your former school and this uh, MEAC institution. Well, obviously, that's a great school. Coach Joyner does a great job there. Um, I don't look at it like that. You know, I, I just coach my team, and I coach them for whatever opponent is in front of us. All right. Thanks, Coach. We'll Thank see you, you on Monday. Bobby Collins, victorious against his old mates at Hampton. A 92-83 win for Maryland Eastern Shore. A spectacular beginning to the MEAC schedule at home. Again, the Hawks improving to 5-12. and They're 1-1 one and one in league play. Hampton's 5-11 and 11 and 0-1. Oh and, and handshakes all around for Bobby Collins. Hawks couldn't bring it home against Morgan State. They did against Hampton. We'll take a break, and when we come back, the post-game show, and we'll wrap things up here, set you up for Monday against Bethune-Cookman. Again, the final score, Eastern Shore 92 and Hampton 83 on the Shore Sports Network and SFMSports.net. Do you need a break, a getaway? Plan a visit to Hyatt Place Dewey Beach in Delaware. Lay back, relax with your toes.